What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. Hope y'all are well. I see you in the chat room. Welcome to the first, very, very first Vocal Shed Retreat Series, part one, hosted by Mike Young. I'm Alpheus Anderson. Hey, everybody. Hope that everybody's well. Please use the chat today. Definitely, um, we have an audience. We have two audiences. Uh, of course, on the Facebook page of The Vocal Shed with Mike Young. Uh, just go over there real quick, take a few moments, get you another device, and uh, go ahead and share, share this video. Like it, share it. Um, shout outs here on Facebook. Uh, Michaela has joined us. I'm just going to call first names. Keita has joined us. Tony McNeil has, has joined us. Welcome to The Vocal Shed. And if you are live here in the vocal shed zoom room um use the chat there and just tell us where you're from there are folks uh, they have registered from all over i mean all over and when i say all over uh i mean all over so just i think i want to give you all a sneak peek look the vocal shed is um today we have folks signed on from from jamaica um africa Canada is in the house. If you're in the Zoom room, just uh, just use the chat. Canada is in the house. And uh, of course, Miami is in the house, Florida. South Carolina is definitely in the house. And uh, Texas is in the house here, California. And New York is here. So welcome, 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 welcome. Again, I'm Alpheus. If you're just joining us, go to thevocalshed.com. And um, also go to the Facebook page, uh, The Vocal Shed with Mike Young. And also go, we see you here in the chat room. It's getting exciting. Go to Instagram and, <coughs> and, and uh, The Vocal Shed <coughs> underscore where singers meet. All right. This is for singers by singers. And this is a, a series. So mark your calendars next week. June the 6th and June the 13th, all right? So three power pack days. If you wanna be here live in the Zoom room, all you have to do is register. Go to www.thevocalshed.com slash retreat. And uh, we're definitely gonna acknowledge you here on Facebook. Deshaya Williams say, yay, so exciting. So Mike, if you wanna chime in, I'm just gonna make everybody feel welcome. And, um, and move this thing right along. We have a power pack day to day. It's, it's normally live. The vocal shed is normally live. So everybody's at home eating and cooking and uh, watching Netflix. And, and so we're forced to, um, you know, do this virtually. And this is going to be phenomenal because now folks are joining us from all over the world. Canada again is here. Africa is here. Um, Alaska here? No, Alaska's not here. But they will soon be here. So in the Vocal Shed series, give y'all a sneak peek. Uh, Wendy Wyatt is next week. All right. She wrote the song, I Have No Reason to Fear. Yeah. So Wendy Wyatt is here um, next week. Also, um, Sean Bigby is going to be here on June the 13th. All right. Yeah, Sean. June the 13th. So, um, but today, this is who we have today. All right. So if you've registered and um, check your spam, check your spam. What happens is um, if you close the browser, when you register, then you will lose the credentials. So all you have to do is just go to the vocalshed.com, re-register. It's going to take you to a thank you page and you get the credentials. All right. So, um, just make sure you check us. Sometimes we go to spam and we go to um, the junk mail, but the vocal shed is not junk. I see your question there, but we're live here on the vocal shed Facebook page. Thank you for it. So John, hopefully you can go ahead and get, get in and we can see you here in the zoom room, the, the zoom room. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the zoom room. I tried to say June room, but the June will be here today and it will be June's room. All right. And Blanche McAllister Dykes will be here today, and she's going to take over. And then Sunday's best winner, Melvin Crispell, will be 
kicking us off today. Mike, you excited? Man, let's do it. What are, what are you I'm, looking forward to today? Oh, I'm just I'm looking forward to just just letting letting these guests just go do what they do. Um, and and so that everybody can just kind of be inspired um, and just kind of learn from that. So uh, just to just to allow them just to do what they do. I mean, they've been at it for so long. They've been successful at it. Um, and so hopefully they well, I, I know they will. They were definitely inspired and, and they and, and they will deliver nuggets that we can actually learn from and and uh, add to whatever it is that we are trying to um, be successful at as far as singing is concerned. Awesome. So in the chat room, if you're in the Zoom room, tell us who you, you know, go ahead, go ahead and pre-populate your questions for Melvin, for Lejeune, for Blanche. Go ahead and get those questions out the way. What's going to happen today after each special guest presents today, there will be Q&A right after, afterwards. And, and some of our guests may be leaving a little bit early, so make sure you get those questions in while we have their attention. All right. And so I don't know if Melvin is already here, but he's kicking us off later. If Lejeune is here, we want to just shout you out and you can unmute your, um, unmute your Zoom. If Blanche is already here, just say, hey, 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 I'm here. And if not, we will find you. Blanche, you're here? It's June. June, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, what's up? That's Lejeune. Yes. Awesome. Can't wait to get you on. And uh, are you excited it. about being here today? Oh, yeah, excited, excited, definitely so. And you're last and you came early. I just wanted to see everybody. We've been in this <laughs> shelter at home. Right. And all of this, so, you know, it's just good to see my fam, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, everybody, so Lejeune is here in the Zoom room. So go ahead and use that chat if you want to. If y'all, if you want to chat and um, just go ahead and use the chat and this will make it exciting. And um, man, the Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself. And definitely, man, we need, we need each other during this season. Um, like never before. It's weird out here, but you know what? God is greater than weird. All right. Yeah. So this is Absolutely. how we're going to kick off today. Mike Young is a um, phenomenal vocal coach, a ranger. And we just want to talk to you. Um, this afternoon, Mike, and we're going to pull something up here on the screen where everybody can see what you are all about and, and some of your um, credentials and credits. Mike, you've worked with everybody. There's somebody who can wow. say anybody. So, Mike, I mean, look at these credits. Now, if you're new to Mike Young, if you're new to The Vocal Shed, don't forget to go to the Instagram page, thevocalshed.com slash where singers meet on Instagram, on YouTube. YouTube is heating up right now. And then, of course, we are live on the Facebook page of The Vocal <coughs> Shed. And also, shout out to Team BGV, Isa and, and Miss Jones over there at Team BGV. They should be streaming yeah. this um, right now as well. But Mike, tell us your story. Um, we're going to get back to these credits. I wanted to flash this out there um, because who knew you were in my city, but man, we, we often don't really know the value of the individ individuals around us. And man, this credits, these credits are crazy and we want to hear about it. So tell us your story. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, just with, with all those records and just being a part of all that, you know, it's, it's just a blessing to um, just be granted the opportunity um, to just be a part of such um, amazing songwriters, producers. Um, obviously, a, a lot of that, a lot of the catalog that you see is is kind of um, well, actually, is 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 an opportunity granted to me by uh, Donald Lawrence. So, um, and then you know, through Donald Lawrence meeting Lejeune, meeting Blanche, so that's where we are even here today. A lot of these people that you're actually going to um, hear from are just just mere bursts out of relationships, years of relationships. So um, our stories are, are, are a lot of the same, just about that whole catalog that you just showed. Um, Blanche and June were, were part of, a part of those things as well. So um, 
yeah, it was just a great opportunity to, to, to actually be a part of a lot of that. A lot of that, you know, was BGV singing. A lot of that uh, was my own vocal production and arranging. Um, so, yeah, it was great. Hey, Mike, um, you just said something about relationships. And, uh, for, you know, a friend of ours, he always say, I don't know if he came up with it, but he always say, life moves at the speed of relationships. Yeah. Um, you see all, all of these records, I mean, from, you know, legendary Clark sisters who just released a phenomenal, um, just, um, I don't know, it, it just broke so many records from Donald Lawrence to even independent artists, um, Todd Galbert, a favorite worship leader. Yes. Um, again, I said, uh, DL and, um, I guess you all, that's, that's, that's how you reference Donald Lawrence. Um, the late Bishop Keith Smith is on. Oh, yeah. Yes. And so how many of these records and, and opportunities was because of a relationship? Can you talk about the importance of just keeping a great name and, 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 and salvaging and, and preserving relationship? Yeah, they, they, they actually all were. Um, you know, like I said, with Donald, you know, producing and a lot of these, even some of the local artists, um, Keith Smith, you know, that, that was relationship from, um, from Josh McDowell, um, producer, um, turning around that, that record, Stephen and Lori, um, Ward relationships there along with Dante's last son relationship, um, which both of those relation those, um, relationships came from you. So it's, it's just about, you know, once you, once you really, um, embrace, you know, that element of, you know, in regards to relationships, you know, if you do it well, um, then it's just going to domino effect in, into other relationships, which will, you know, create even more opportunities. So Sean so Big, Dickey's record. I mean, that was, that was, I mean, that, that was, that was not, not only relationship, that was just, that was like fam. So it's, you know, um, the more you kind of, you kind of give, and do that, then other doors will open for you to, to actually do other things as well. So. so, so Mike, who knew that you were in a movie? And of course, man, this movie needs to be replayed in, in sadly in 2020, um, because so many, man, injustices and just unfortunate, I don't know, some people call it judgment call, bad, bad judgment calls, it's, it is a lack it's, it's, it's the lack of love. It is the lack of um, respect. And it's the lack of loving your neighbor as yourself. And this movie, Boycott, um, just brought to light some of the, you know, the struggles and the trials of the African-American. Man, but, but you in this movie. Let's talk about that. How was it being in this movie? And um, what was your role? Um, and, and, you know, and I think that's very... It's very pertinent to to what you know to the vocal shed today and how singers can have opportunities oh, even yeah. in, in in film. Yeah, that 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 opportunity again came through through DL. Um, I think initially they they kind of like just wanted to just really like pitch uh, one of his songs to be a part of it, and then once they got the soundtrack and heard the soundtrack, they was like, "Dude, can we work it out for you to just bring the choir in?" to kind of make that work. And so actually Tri-City Singers actually served as um, um, the choir, you know, for the, for a lot of, well, for most of the church scenes that were actually in the, the in the movie for the Martin Luther King. Um, and so that, that was a, that was altogether a, new, a fresh experience for us, a new experience, a new dynamic, because obviously acting takes, takes precedence over the music and, you know, in that particular feel. So it was, it was a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of sit and wait. Um, a lot, a lot of, you know, just um, kind of making that, that whole production part of it work. So, um, but it was a great, 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 great experience. Educational as well, because there's a lot of stuff that they, they actually brought out in the movie that was, that was definitely new, new to me um, at that time. So, and they actually filmed that in Atlanta, at least the parts that we did was right there in Atlanta. So. Um, which is great, great doing that. So, so Mike, you know, vocal coaching, you have this template. I call it a template 
because even if you're working with experienced singers, um, I've seen you work with beginners, but you seem to always take them uh, through this process. And mm-hmm. if you have not named it the Mike Young template, the Mike Young checkup, you should. And, and it's some of what I've seen is you talk about breathing and I think you're going to give us some breathing exercises. So y'all get ready singers and please share this video here on Facebook. We see Jasmine, uh, Regina, Herb, Irby Stacks is joining us on Facebook. Wow. Um, and you can, you can definitely register if you're on Facebook and want to come in the Zoom and you'll get the credentials. Uh, Talisha Jones is there. She said, Mike is the guy. And um, wow. Cynthia Parker just joined us. Mike Rose just joined us. But Mike, your, your template, your, your framework, and I just got word that I think Melvin is, is on. He's up next, coming up in a oh, right. few moments. Mike. Melvin, can you yell at us? Say what's up. What's up, everybody? Yep. Hey, Mel. How you doing? Great, we man. Can't, we can't wait to see you in about about seven minutes, man. But absolutely. thank you for coming early. And yes, uh, absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. We're proud of you, and uh, can't thank wait you. to hear from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't that old, <laughs> <laughs> Mike? Your template, your template. So you always seem to take them through these breathing exercises. You take, you take us through, oh, how I love to sing. And you mm-hmm. always take us through um, things that can help us with phrasing. And then you, and then you throw in this non-tone scale. Mm-hmm. All right, so just pick one from your template um, and, and walk us through it. And why do you choose this Mike Young checkup? I think, you know, I, 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 all the three that you actually named, um, a lot of times, you know, even with a lot of my students or just people in general, they always talk about, um, you know, some of the weaknesses that they have. And the one thing that I've, that I've noticed and found out is that the breathing element is or should be the foundation to all of that. You know, in other words, if you treat or if you learn how to breathe, you know, properly and correctly, that everything else as far as tone, range, all of that kind of falls into place. So a lot of times, I, I definitely spend like a lot of time um, really coaching the breathing element of it. Um, because, you know, a lot of times we grew up as singers, all, you know, a lot of times as singers, we we kind of duplicate what we see. And and for years, I never really saw any, anybody breathing, you know, and singing. It was just, it was just more, of just open up your mouth and you just sing what you feel. Um, which is okay, but if you if you do that and then add the technique to it, then then the longevity of your um, ability to sing can go a whole lot longer, you know, because you're actually able to actually preserve the voice and do some things that um, that normally would just wear you out vocally. So the breathing is, has always really been like like the main foundation of all of that, and I've I've not I actually seen where. Um, you know, incorporating that and doing that, all the other stuff just kind of falls into place. So I usually kind of just start there, you know, with a lot of my students. So Mike, take us through the S breathing. I like how you, uh, how you allow us to do the S breathing because it seems like it really, it really showcases if you breathing right or breathing wrong or mm-hmm. if you work on it and build up that, that um, I guess that skill, whatever you call it, but take us through that here. Um, okay. So also, Kimberly um, Cooper, I got to keep shouting out folks um, because you have to hang out with us. Um, it's, 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 it's an honor to hang out with you all. I enjoyed the last one that I was a part of live. So Kimberly was able to attend your oh, live um, vocal shed and she said she enjoyed it. But take us through that S breathing. All right. So actually, and, and it's kind of hard to see, but if everybody wants to actually demonstrate, that'd be great. Um, the S breathing, the whole concept of the S breathing is that it actually teaches you to control your breathing versus allowing your breathing to control you. A lot of times singers tend to, whether they sing or whether they're phrasing different things, they'll run out of air or, um, you know, cut the phrase short just because they just don't have the, the proper support to breathe the way that they need to. So with the S breathing, it actually creates that space to where you can um, be able to hold your phrases a lot longer, um, be able to support whatever it is that you're actually, you know, singing. Um, 
just to make the execution of it a, a whole lot better. So in the S breathing, basically all it is, you actually inhale, take a deep breath in, you hold it, and then instead of like normal how we do, we just let it out with the regular air. With the S breathing, you're actually gonna control it. You're gonna inhale, and when you exhale on the letter S. It's so always through that. And you're actually allowing yourself to control um, the air that you're actually dispensating. Because a lot of times when you're singing, you're not, or you shouldn't be actually dispensating air over every word or every phrase when it comes to that. Um, so being able to control that. And the more you do that, you should obviously be able to hold more air. Um, if you're holding more air, now you have more support. And therefore, um, that helps with um, vocal longevity. Awesome. So in the chat room, if you have any questions about breathing, um, Mike, if you can talk about this nine tone scale, demonstrate it and how it's important with phrasing. So next week, Wendy Wyatt would be here talking about phrasing. And so just want to just whet your appetite. Um, this nine tone scale is, is, it seems easy, but it's, I've tried it. All right. Come on, you ain't tried it. <laughs> I have tried it. I got a keyboard over there and it, man, it, I can stay on pitch, but I can't last through the nine-tone scale. Without uh, breathing. That's what it is. I'm not breathing. So, You're not breathing. Um, you know, so many people are on here. Facebook, uh, Vanessa Doris is, is, is in Facebook. Antoine Crawford from Asheville, hey, North man. Carolina. Uh, your niece, Kimberly Morris here, Mike Rhodes. Um, but if you're in the Zoom room and you want to you wanna come on and try this, um, you want to try this nine-tone scale, um, feel free to, all right? And, um, but talk about that nine-tone scale. And then Melvin is coming up here in a few minutes. Yeah. Great. Well, with, with the, with the nine-tone, it's, it's kind of like two-phase. I mean, you know, like a normal scale, we sing a normal scale. La, 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 which is going from actually one to eight. But what I actually challenge people to do is actually, for the sake of range, just to go ahead and actually sing the, nine, the ninth tone and then come down. So it's just simple. Which is that. And so the challenge even more so is to actually use the number system. Um, because a lot of times, you know, especially with, with, with musicians, that's, that's their language. That's their common language. They're always talking in terms of numbers. Um, and so if if a, if a singer actually understands that, the element of it, then the communication between you and your uh, musician can be a, be a whole lot greater. Um, so in that, actually, you actually, like he has on the screen, you're actually gonna take out, take out the eight, because we won't say eight, we'll make that seven, one, nine. So in terms of the scale is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, nine, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And so when you have that, you have that. And so now you're actually learning, you're actually learning numbers in regards to actual pitches, um, which that's the language that they use. So a lot of times when, when musicians say, hey, I want to, you know, let's go to the four. Then you know what that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, nine, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's exactly what that is. So it it actually it actually helps, excuse me, helps in regards to ear training, as well as just knowing that relationship you know, relationship between the one and the four, the one and the five, the one and the six. So you actually be able to hear that and to be able to vocalize that as well. So it's a great, 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 great technique. I recommend that you kind of start it slow um, because a lot of times, you know, 
the thing of it is when you start adding speed to anything, you have a tendency to kind of lose the accuracy of it. So the more if you the more you practice it slow to maintain the accuracy, then add the speed and try to maintain the accuracy as well. Do that along with the breathing and modulate to do that as well. That's a nice, nice, nice workout. A nice vocal workout. Wow. So you 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 kind of dropped a bomb on us, Mike. And you said that we need to learn the number system and mm -hmm. and it, it helps with your ear training and it helps with it helps with harmony. Um, mm -hmm. Harmony is so important and it's really hard. I'm, I remember struggling to hear harmony coming up and just be all over the place before I learned the number system and saw the intervals and saw how that worked with my voice and the spacing in between notes. And mm -hmm. one of your checkups, Doc, is Oh, How I Love to Sing. And it's, it's actually built on scales and using like one, three, five, so mm -hmm. on and so on. And so can you demonstrate Oh, How I Love to Sing, talk about how it helps with harmony, and then Melvin Crispell, the third is coming up to bless us. Francina Way just joined us on Facebook. Jared Dawson, um, somebody just Great. shared it on Facebook. Thank y'all for sharing it. Somebody just started a watch party here on Facebook. Um, Kimberly Cooper is, I think she's in the Zoom room and on Facebook. You, I'm not present, young lady. <laughs> Tamara Baxter is Charleston, South Carolina's finest. She's on. Brian Wright is on. Tracy Blue is on. I think wow, the students are on. So, oh, how I love to sing and uh, walk us through that. Yeah, that, that's basically, you know, like you said, the one, the basically one, three, five. So, which is, which is actually the root position for um, basically for any chord, which, you know, actually be the root position of, of harmonization as well. Because when you do the, oh, how I one three five one five three one so now you have that oh how i love to sing and so that that variation you got the one three five um and then it then it flips to the the five three one which is which is actually the the one three five five three one first invert the root position and then first inversion so you're getting in that exercise, um, your ears tuned to, to, to hearing what the one, three, five and the relationship of that, um, which actually creates, you know, the basic, the basic elements of harmony from that perspective. Yeah, one, three, five, one, five, three, one, correct. Are you on, are you? Any questions based on the S breathing, um, put them in the chat or on Facebook. Starsha says, hello. Um, it's a family reunion. Sophia says, hello. Matrisa hey. says, hello. Hey. Um, how many struggle with breathing? All right. How many, how many understand or would like to go deeper in understanding harmony? All right. We're going to do a poll here in a second. And... We're going to see if there's any questions in the chat. All right, so we're about to bring Melvin on. Keep those questions coming. Tasha Hamilton is on Facebook. Thank you for sharing. And uh, we're going to bring up Melvin's bio. So, so Melvin, go ahead and um, just reveal yourself, and we're going to read some, some things and share with everybody what you have going on and, and, and keep moving. We're excited you are here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, hey, Mel. What are you doing these days? On? These days, um, mostly, um, I, can, I can proudly say um, that I'm working on my very, very first record. And I'm awesome. super, super, super excited. Can't wait for everybody to hear it. Um, it's going to be a good time. So, so Melvin yeah. Chris Bell, if, if Melvin folks are on here from all over Africa, Canada. Wow. Um, and so Melvin Chris Bell III hails from a rich musical legacy. His father, world-renowned musician Melvin Crispell Jr., composed and played on award-winning songs for some of gospel's music, gospel music biggest artists. 
His mother, the lovely Tanisha Crispell, was a celebrated and still is a celebrated gospel singer whose voice that we often can hear in Melvin was featured on several well-known choir recordings along with a critical acclaimed solo pro project. With a sudden death of his father at 16, followed by the um, ultimate demise of his mother at 18, Melvin was able to overcome through his relationship with God and music and that the trauma was not the end of his story. Man, we love that, that, that single as well. Thank Melvin you. hopes that winning, he's a winner of Sunday's Best, one of our favorites, will allow him to use his dynamic voice to lead others to a closer relationship with God and to carry on his family's legacy while also creating his own. Melvin, I'm telling you right now, you don't have to hope anymore, Doc. Your hope, your wish has come true because every time you open up your mouth, um, we are encouraged, we are inspired. Yes. And, and of course, those singers want to be like you. And Mike is going to take us deeper and dig into your brain and, um, and, and pull out some of uh, uh, whatever he wants to pull out. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Doc, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I think I've always known your mom and um, your dad. And then when, I think when I actually first heard you sing, I was just amazed at, um your musicality your creativity wow thank you explain, means so much. <laughs> explain, a, explain a little bit about that how how what's a what's the you know like if somebody were to actually present to you a song um tell us a little bit about that process when you know when it comes to you actually because it, i mean it, it has to be more to it than you just opening up your mouth and you just kind of doing what you feel it has to be I mean, for it to be so accurate and so um, polished and, you know, and all of that. Tell, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, the walkthrough of that. Yeah. Um, well, for me, um, you know, when I'm presented a song, um, I, I typically, you know, live with it for maybe a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I try to try my best to figure out the intent of the writer um mm -hmm. in the cover tune the intent of the singer um mm -hmm. number one the message that they're trying to get across the message that they're trying to relay um mm -hmm. and also um music is is more than is just music it's, it's a feeling and you yeah. want people to be uh, affected by what you're singing and and the different sounds that you make different melodies different harmonies you want you want everybody to experience the feeling um, right. and, and, and to, to, to be able to, you know, experience whether it be joy, whether it, it's a song about encouragement or it's a song, um, you know, telling the testimony. You want people to feel what, you, what you're going through or, or what you're mm -hmm. trying to relate so it can be relatable to them. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, you know, I try to, you know, I take that into account. Then I also try to make it my own. Um, right. You know, what things can I do um, as a singer to, you know, put my own flair on it, you know, um, mm -hmm. still keeping the same intensity of the song, um, not doing too much and not doing too less. Um, mm -hmm. That's really where my mind goes, just basically like, if you can imagine like an equalizer in your mind trying to, you know, get the levels right and, and making mm -hmm. sure they're all aligned to, you know, I know that it's fine to the best that you can, you know? Yeah. That, I mean, that, that, that element, you know, like you said about being able to, to, to capture um, the essence of the, the, the writer, uh, the intention of the song. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, with a lot of singers, we can, we can tend to overlook that moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and then the you know the song may 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 appear to be great, and then and then you know you may actually have a, a producer or an artist that actually written the song and be like ah it was okay it was all right mm -hmm. yeah and, and a lot yeah. of that just so because of the fact that that the artist actually missed the real intent of the song that can right. that can so easily you know happen um, so it, it's definitely great to hear that that you actually take a lot of that in consideration. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about some of the 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 vocal um 
the vocal uh, techniques or or the vocal uh, or the vocal uh, uh, tricks and things of that of that nature. How do you is, is that something that you kind of rehearse or is it just is it just a kind of natural? Um, you know, um, kind of does all that come natural to you? Well, at, at a time it didn't. Um, I didn't really have uh, lessons per se. Um, mm -hmm. growing up with my mom, um, she would teach me certain things along the way. And I guess as I would, you know, I guess it was really trial by fire, you know, um, just, mm -hmm. you know, executing certain things and, and while I'm singing, thinking about all of those things, you know, breathing, um, 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 you know, control, um, mm -hmm. there's still things to this day that I'm working on. Like one of my biggest things now, um, is working on my control. Um, I feel like. I could be so much better at my control and, you know, just studying, 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 studying um, mm -hmm. different people, different techniques. Mike Young, you've helped me in so many <laughs> ways. You, you, you already know. S breathing was, was a, a, a key that actually pushed me to another level. Um, and it's just simple things that, you know, you wouldn't believe would take you to an entirely different place. Um, and, you know, that's, that's just, that's, that's really like the goal to just, you know, it's, you can always better yourself. You're never, you, you can never be perfect. It, there's gotcha. always room for improvement. Um, so anything, anything that I can do, any step, any, any tip from anybody across the world, you know, they don't even have, they don't even have to be the best of singers for me right. to learn something from somebody. Um, you know, some, one person over here, you know, they may not be able to do the runs and the, and the scats and the riffs, but their tone Mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a thousand and yeah. that is that is the money maker so if i can pull i can pull this tone from here and i can pull a, a a run or a riff from over here or how they process that and put them together you create something mm -hmm. totally new absolutely. you know absolutely so with that because i mean because you are you're obviously you know a young singer you know kind of really new on the scene yeah. Who are some, you know, who are some of your mentors vocally? Goodness. Um, I have so many. I, I, I really study all the time. Um, right. Tons of people. Um, I would say my favorite gospel artist right now uh, and, and a, a, a mentor in my head um, mm -hmm. is Anthony Brown. Um, just mm -hmm. his whole entire ministry um, mm -hmm. is, is a big mm -hmm. lesson for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, from from production, uh, as far as um, his singers, his performance, um, their sound, they just have such a fine tuned sound. And that came from nothing but practice, nothing but day after day, day in and day out, just practicing, practicing, practicing their craft. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it inspires me, you know, his voice, how they sing, how they carry different things, you know, the, the dramatics, if you want to call it, of how mm -hmm. they, you know, piece together songs. When you listen to an Anthony Brown song, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, you can just incredible. feel it. Yeah, you it's can incredible. You feel everything. Yeah. Like, it, 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 sometimes it makes you want to cry. It makes you want to dance. Like, you just, you never know. And that, that is such a lesson for me because that's what, for my music personally, I want my music to be that effective to where it touches and 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 it moves you, you know. Um, so that's why this is my first album working on it. That's a whole nother story. Um, but um, Kimberell, she's also a, a big influence for me. Um, a lot of people say that I still run from her. I still, mm, I mean, <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I do. I I do. I do take a lot from her. Um, her accuracy and her execution mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and her control is why she is so big with me. It's not, not necessarily all the runs that she can do. Now, yes, she, mm -hmm. she's out of this world, but um, it's all about her execution. Like, how did you, how did you think about this musically to, to put, you know, this together? If you, if you right. get what I'm saying, like right. that, so that, that's kind of something that I study, like, okay, you have this type of music, like say, like the number system, if you're, you're, you're uh, if somebody's holding the four, what can you do here? Right. Mm -hmm. To, to make it not normal, you know, not, mm -hmm. the, not the typical um, and, and make it your own, make it different. I think that's, that's 
Kimberell's thing. She takes, she just takes the normal and turns it into something we've never seen. So Absolutely. that's why, like, that's why I, I study her so much because, you know, that, that mindset is what you need. That ear training is, is, is just really, you know, what you need. And there's so many others. Um, I, you mentioned Wendy, somebody mentioned Wendy White is coming on next week. I study her yeah. a lot. She's, she's another one, her control, her breathing is just impeccable. And it's, it's so many others. It's just like, there's so many things you can learn from so many different places. Well, if you don't mind, you want to bless the people a little bit with a little song, a little something, something? Oh, oh, sure. Um, it's a song that I sing all the time. Um, and I've been singing it since I was a child. And it still to this day means so, so, so much to me. Um, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God. In prayer, oh, what peace we open for, or fed and all, mm -hmm. what needless pain we bear. See, it's all because we do not care. Carry all everything to God in prayer. Incredible, man! Thank you, thank you, incredible. Thank you, thank you. What led you to do? What led you to do that run for that transition from the from the verse to the chorus? Tell me, what what was the process there? You just kind of felt that? Yeah, I kind of felt. Amazing. I mean, I I um. I think about the chords of the song, like how a keyboard, I can't play, but I wish I could. But um, it's, it's all in my head. I, you know, hear how a musician would play the song. I guess knowing the song, um, mm -hmm. being familiar with it, uh, it helps mm -hmm. um, you know where to go, you know, and mm -hmm. it helps you to make those choices. So, you know, you don't have to play it safe. If you're familiar, you know, yeah. you, don't yes. you don't always have to play it safe. You can actually- That's it take that risk you know um yeah. and 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 just go w where wherever you know god leads you to go that's it man that was incredible dude thank you thank you so you much. gotta come back on you definitely absolutely. gotta come back on absolutely yeah. it was my honor to be here absolutely man everybody melvin crispell the three love you guys so much <laughs> thank you for Appreciate having you, me bro yes a couple questions you i think there's a couple questions in the chat here um yes. okay this, this is the time to get them in and Melvin's going to, um, and he'll be, hopefully he'll be back with us soon. Melvin, you are incredible. Yes. Mr. Mr. Half you. Step, man, you masters, <laughs> you master half steps. Absolutely. I mean, you Thank can take you. a half step and just make you go, oh. Right. And, and, <laughs> I mean, so, so we got to talk about that later on. Just half steps, yeah. the importance of knowing what half steps are. Yes. And, um, so, when is, the, when is the, um, the record set to release? Do you have a date yet? I don't have a date, but I do know. Um, Summertime. Okay, great. Summertime. Summertime. Great. Questions for Melvin here on Facebook. You got a, you got a, like a couple minutes. A yes, question absolutely. Yes. Melvin, um, in, um, in the chat, um, these, we have some more questions for Mike, and we'll come back to those. He'll be with us all day. Any particular questions for Melvin here in the Zoom room? Um, Derek Bull is watching. Dontavious Latson just joined on Facebook. Um, if not, we're going we're gonna to definitely bring up um, our next artist here, background singer, here in the chat. I don't see anything in the chat here. Uh, you can also unmute yourself if, you, if you're in the Zoom room, all right? We're recording as well, so um, um, you'll be on camera. Just holler, you know, holler at Mel, and, and this is the time to ask your question. Go ahead. Hey, Mel. <laughs> 
What's no. up? Yes, sir. Somebody on, somebody on Facebook, um, Sophia asked, um, what were some of the best techniques you learned from your experience on Sunny Best? Oh, goodness. Um, I can, oh, I wish I can demonstrate it, but I can't. I don't have all the tools that I need. Um, but one of the greatest technique that, techniques that I learned while I was on the show, um, if you get you a water bottle, um, you know, empty it out about halfway or drink, drink it about to, down to about halfway um, mm -hmm. and get you two um, like coffee straws, um, mm -hmm. the, little, the little skinny straws, mm -hmm. um, and you blow bubbles in the water. But while you're mm -hmm. blowing bubbles, um, how someone would normally do the sirens, whoo, um, mm -hmm. you, blow, you blow those sounds into the water. Um, I cannot remember exactly how he explained it, but I think like the, the tension of the bubbles in the water, it, it, helps, I, it, it helps with your vocals. And as you stretch, like as you do those sirens, um, mm -hmm. you either, you know, you go up, it's basically a warm up. Um, right. You know, you siren up to the top um, and if it's not clear, you keep blowing those bubbles and keep going up and literally our voices opened up in like five minutes, literally. Wow. Like we were, we were all, we were all at a place for the rest of us that were there. Um, we were all at a place where we were like, we just, we can't do this. <laughs> we're done. And wow. he, he told us what to do. You know, we did those sirens up and we did them going down and you can hear like mm -hmm. the raspiness. You can hear the scratchiness uh, versus when we first started to afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, it was a whole, it was a totally different story. So that was yeah, one of the I, greatest techniques I learned. Yeah, I think the blowing, the blowing um, air in the straws, it, it, actually, it actually pushes you to breathe at that point. Mm, so you're actually, yeah. you're, actually adding you're actually adding breath to your tones, which causes that chest cavity to actually open up to where it needs wow. to, to yes. produce those tones. So yeah, that's a great Absolutely. exercise. Yes. Um, Todd Gabbard does it um, pretty much uh, on Sunday mornings before he actually goes out and ministers on Sunday mornings. So it's a mm -hmm. great, 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 great. Oh, technique. wow. Yeah. yeah. Great technique. Yeah, it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Mike Dizzy. Mm -hmm. Big I hear Sean Big B. <laughs> Big B. Melvin, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> So um, in, in conversations with, with, with your mom about studio before, um, mm -hmm. she was a master of ad-libs. Um, and yes. one of the things she told me was that she would often write her ad-libs and stuff out before she would record. And so she would, you know, essentially just read it. She'd have her ad-libs and stuff written out and she would read it. Can you talk a little bit about your approach to ad-libbing for recording? Um, or do you take that same approach or is it like one of those things off the dome? How, how do you approach uh, your, your ad libs? Up until this point, um, I would say for me, um, it's really been off the top of my head. I guess, um, I guess you know, it com comes with connecting with the song. With, with me, I would personally um, look up scriptures um, that go along with that song to try to gain some you know, insight of what I want to talk about you know, aside from what's already going on. Um, but it's crazy that you say that um, because for this record, you know, my goal is to do all of that beforehand and then come in having them all written down um, and, 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 and just going for it. If I want to make an edit here, if, you know, something doesn't really make sense, you know, I can, I can change it. But just having just that preparedness is, mm -hmm. is very, very, very important. And it's something I wish I could have done in the past, but now, yeah. Right. Yeah, because she was the queen, the queen. I mean, the yes. it was like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said yeah. she, she couldn't think of it in the moment. She would have to lay it all out. And I was like, really? And she was like, no, I, I lay my ad libs and stuff out. I was like, oh, I could wow. never tell. I could never tell. Right. I could never tell. Wow. That's incredible. Never tell. Yeah, that's it. She was my fave. <laughs> Ashley has a question in the chat, Mike. I don't know if you can see it. Who? Ashley Williamson. Can you see it? Um, let me look. Okay, yeah. How how do you train your ear, and what does your practice look like when focusing on your agility? How do I train my ear, and what does my practice look like uh, 
working with agility. Um, mm-hmm. With when it comes to agility, um, is that one? That one is for me. I tell all of my friends. A lot of my friends here joke around, like, you know, teach me how to sing, teach me how to do this. Blah, blah, blah. You don't want it for real. But if you want it for real, um, you know, people try to do a run and they say, I can't do it. I can't do it. Number one, stop that. Because anything you put your mind to, you can do. Um, yeah. Running, it, 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 is, it is much simpler than we make it out to be. Um, for me, when I, learn, when I learn runs or when I come up with new runs, you know, I imagine it and I do it. And it sounds horrible, literally terrible. But from that point, I know exactly what I want it to sound like. So from mm-hmm. then I start slow. I literally start slow until I can do it fast. Like, well, not fast, mm-hmm. but to that speed. Mm-hmm. And then I pick up the pace. Mm-hmm. And, and every, every time I pick up the pace, I, I do it until I do it with no mistake. And yeah, then I keep doing it faster. And I keep doing it yeah. faster. That's literally, literally how you practice a run, like learn a run. Um, and you just, you really just have to take the time with yourself um, and, and work on, did you guys lose me? Okay, here we go. Um, you have to take the time with yourself um, to, really, to really work on it. And what was the other question? I totally forgot, I'm sorry. Yeah. Training your ear. Oh, I training think, my ear. Think, yeah. Training my ear. Um, the number system mm-hmm. is very, 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 very key. To, to really know as a singer. Um, I, can, I can honestly say I'm not all the way there 100%, but I know I'm at least there one through, one through six. I'm, I'm with you. One through six, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good. But once you start going, going back and you start flipping all around, you're going to have to give me a second. But, it, but it's, it's training, though. It is, it is really training, um, you know, to just know what different sounds are. I guess... Um, a good a good tip for ear training um you for you know for singers that you know are are not to the place that they want to be yet if you get to a piano um mm-hmm. you know just play a, if you play a simple c chord um figuring out what is soprano alto and tenor that's that's a that's a that's a perfect start if you can mm-hmm. identify if you can identify those things you know that's already a level up in your training then from there you can take it to uh uh you know adding different chords like diminished chords or you know it it just depends uh suspended chords like figuring out what is what in in those chords um that's you know that's really how you train and studying studying other people it helps It, it it helps studying different people who you want to picture yourself as, or you see yourself as, or, you know, anything that you just want to learn, like pull from somebody, you know, just listening and studying how they do what they do. They don't even have to explain it just by watching them. You can almost tell like a a true singer, you can tell, you can just tell how, how they, they execute something just by watching them, you know? Like that, that's, yeah. I mean, that's how it is for me. I can't, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, you know, I just watch and see how they, how they came about doing that. So that, I mean, that, that's, that's good ear training to just, you know, study, 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 study. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So Mike, we're going to transition here. My goodness. I hope y'all took a screenshot of those notes and this, this will probably show up on the, the Vocal Shed YouTube channel. And also some clips on the Instagram, the Vocal Shed Instagram page. If you, man, Melvin. Yes, boy. Phenomenal. Love you, man. Thank you so much, Mike. Love, love you, man. Absolutely. Love you too, bro. I'm proud of you. Incredible. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you, everybody. Thanks for having me. Right. Yep. Absolutely. And tell Melanie what's up. Thank you. I will. Absolutely. So we, we're going to actually launch a poll. And if um, Blanche is up next, if you're here, um, you mean Jim. If she's not, we're gonna um, we're gonna we're gonna wait, but we're gonna launch a poll. If you're on Facebook, you won't. You can chime in on Facebook. Um, we're gonna launch this poll real quick, and in the Zoom room, just answer. And um, the poll is in progress right now. And for our 
Uh, Facebook guys, we're just gonna, I'll just, um, so Blanche is watching. So I don't know if she's in a Zoom room. Um, we gotta get her up, get, in, get her in here, make sure she's okay. So the questions in the poll, do warm ups, do you warm up every day? All right, and we see the responses are coming in. 13% say yes, 56% says no, 33% says I don't warm up consistently. The number two question in the poll here is, how often do you practice major scales? 0% says every day, 0% says every day, three times a week, 15%, and 38% says once a week. All right, and 13% and says never, and somebody, 26% uh, says, what's a major scale? All right, so Melvin just told us, we gotta learn the number system, you can learn a diminished chord once you learn the major scale, all mm -hmm. right? And so 23% says, what's a major scale? That's a problem because you won't have a good ear. You won't be able to run. You will not be accurate. Um, and I misspoke. Lejeune is up next. Um, and so um, she is definitely somebody that knows the major scale because when you hear her run, you know <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that this gift the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Every good. She is studied. She knows. I know she knows major scales. And I uh, just want to talk about Lejeune here real quick. And then, and then Blanche's um, last but not least, Lejeune Thompson, born May 15, 1970, as Francis <laughs> Lejeune Hayes. I got an aunt Francis. Is an American gospel music musician and art artist. Now this is from Wikipedia, all right? So she's optimized singers. She started her music career in 2001 with the release of Soul Inspiration by EMI Gospel. Love that record. This mm -hmm. album was her breakthrough on Billboard magazine charts, which is placed on the gospel album, albums and Christian albums. Her second album, Metamorphosis, love that record as well was released by Lacey Entertainment in 2008. She released the third album, Evolution of Me, with Fontana Records. Her parents divorced, so while with her mother, check this out, she listened to religious music because her mom was a minister of evangelism. Y'all know, know where it's going. While at her father, she listened to secular music, some people call it secular music. <laughs> and, and it was captivated by the vocals of Al Green. That explains it. Early on, she was a member of the Tri-City Singers before she started her solo career. So many credits, Life in Favor with John P. Key, Cast Your Cares with Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers, Revival and Rewritten with DL and Tri-City Singers on the Favorite gospel album right now in the season, Goshen. Uh, One More Sunny Day with Donna Lawrence in Tri-City. During Christmas time, you can hear Lejeune on Carol of the Bells. Mike, you can take us, deep, take us deeper with your colleague, friend, um, Lejeune Francis Thompson. Francis. <laughs> Al, <laughs> I so, hope that you have a good insurance policy on you because you are dead after that. You was it's not on the supposed internet. to get my okay, okay. Who, you know you that who put that Who's out there? Not, I don't know who put that out there. It's on Wikipedia. <laughs> it's on Wikipedia. <laughs> Somebody got the devil in them. <laughs> Oh my god. I know. I just I just I just realized it was a Wikipedia. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not gonna kill you today, Al. I love you. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't know. I thought you put it up there. I mean it's no, I had no idea. <laughs> we gotta wow. we gotta <laughs> Oh yeah, we gotta you fix famous that. If you're on Wikipedia though. Right. <laughs> we gotta really fix are. that. <laughs> Mike, it's on you, Mike. Joan, how are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Um, great, great. Um, okay. Um, quick question. Well, well, well just, just not a question, but, but pretty much a comment in particularly. You have always been, to me, you have always been um, 
one of one of the singers, you know, rather lead, rather background vocalist, you've always been one of the singers that I call it, I call it a singer of many faces. What I mean by that is that by far you're one of the, you know, one of the singers that can literally take one song, two songs, three songs, and you, when you sing it, you give every, you know, all three songs a different color, a different face. Is that intentional or is that is. just, is that just your, your approach to that? It's my approach, but it's also intentional. Um, I learned early on, I didn't want to be put in a box. So, um, and I learned that from my soul inspiration days with EMI. Um, they tried to name me um, Neo Soul Artist, which mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, either soul artist or not. I don't think there's such thing as a Neo Soul. But and I, that from that experience, I learned that I refuse to let them put me in a box. Um, and also my upbringing, um, as, as Al read, um, my mom, we listened to Christian music because my mom was a Christian. But when I went to my daddy's house, it was Al Green, it was Bootsy, it was all, all other kind of stuff. So I kind of obtained those layers um, and then it kind of evolved throughout the years. But that experience and not wanting to be put in that box. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm a Pentecostal girl, so of course I grew up singing hard gospel. But mm -hmm. um, just realizing that there were other venues and stages that I wanted to do. Um, so, and there were other genres that I wanted to you kind of, kind of, you know, explore. Um, so I just kind of, I've been intentional about being able to, and it's almost like when I hear a song or somebody brings me a song, it's almost like I see a different color. So I try to match that Perfect. vocally. Yeah. So I don't know if it makes sense, but that's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it definitely makes sense. Um, because you, you know, you, you get, you get a lot of, a lot of singers and, and it's no knock against them, but a lot of, a lot of singers sometimes can, with any song, they could become kind of predictable yeah. um, in their approach. Um, mm. But you, but, but you have, I mean, you found that niche to where you try to, like you say, you intentionally change those colors, but it's, it's still enough so people can recognize that's Le Jim, um, yeah. which, is, which is incredible. I mean, that, to me, to be able to master that, that that's like a whole nother level, you know, wow. because, because it goes beyond just, opening, you know, opening up your mouth and just singing, um, yeah. you know, and it just kind of goes to a, a, a whole nother level. But talk about, um, even in this time, talk about um, how you have been able, because that, there again, from going from, and, and I've known you back from the Promise days, you know, with the, yes. with the group Promise. <laughs> oh, Lord. And those, yeah. yeah, those records, going from that to um, the, the songs, you know, with Tri City DL, mm -hmm. and then of course the, the songs with your, with you know you being your your uh, individual artist. How how do you or how did how is still today? How do you still vocally remain relevant with all the changes in you know in the music? You know, because some some artists there again, once they get their name out and they do their thing. They just kind of stick to that, regardless to whatever it is you know they're doing. But you, on the other hand, you—I it, it, mean—it's just amazing how you can just like prime example. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard it. But, um, I was just amazed to hear your approach when you sung um, "Revival," um, mm. and you know that Donald intended it. You know, is obviously it was a CCM song, but he kind of yes. flipped it to kind of make it us but you mm -hmm. still cater to that CCM feel. And so when Donald let me, you know, originally listen to it before everybody did, I was like, who is that singing? He's like, that's June. And I was like, no way. <laughs> you know, there again, I mean, I'm like, wow, here it is, 2000, at the time, it was like 2019, 2018, yeah. 19. And you still amaze me, you know, just with that change in that color and then staying true to that element of the song. Talk about that. Um, I think it, again, it comes from layers. Um, I remember having a conversation with Donald early on and he said, there's some other, there's another side to your voice. And mm -hmm. I never really, you know, explored it. Um, 
and I, I used to sing in chorus and my choral teacher, shout out to Miss Yokely, um, she would make me sing softer songs. She said, no, don't sing it so hard, sing it softer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it was in there. I just, you know, again, Pentecostal, a gospel singer, you know, they throw you a mic, they want you to squad, they want you to scream, right. they want you to do this. But, um, you know, and, and after I got a vocal coach, um, I recognized that there were some layers, um, as well as working with Cedric, he would tell me, you know, sing it another way, mm -hmm. take a different mm -hmm. approach. So mm -hmm. it opened me up to say, okay, let me explore the layers that are there um, mm -hmm. and not just, you know, stay confined to this one, one thing, one vocal thing. And again, mm -hmm. it's good to be consistent, you know, Absolutely. always be consistent. I try my best, you know, have some good days, have some bad days, but at the same <laughs> token, <laughs> You know, it's always good for me to try to explore, okay, when I hear it, okay, wow, I hear it and I see a color and I say, oh, wow, that sounds and looks different to me. So um, that, you know, singing from singing with Tri City to singing with The Promise, um, to singing, you know, as an artist, you know, I try to make sure it, it, as best I can that I can stay consistent and relevant. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, I love a vast, vast variety of artists. I love everybody from John Baez to, mm -hmm. to, you know, Al Green to, to of course, the Clark Sisters. We gonna, my list is long for the gospel side, but I love jazz. I love, I love a lot of genres of music. So, mm -hmm. um, and then being exposed at an early age to different genres, I think that was the foundation as to why I approach it that way. It's incredible, incredible. Talk about the 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 vocal care, um, the vocal hygiene. What what's a what's a a, a routine for you? How do you wow. how do you prepare well, your voice? Yeah. Um, I just I was on vocal rest from December to March, and um, out of thirty years plus of singing professionally, I started at twelve with Pastor mm -hmm. John P. Key, did right. my first live recording. I have never been on vocal rest. And first of all, it was a psychological issue for me because I probably should have taken that step much earlier than I did because I knew that there was some vocal issues going on. And it stemmed from laryngopharyngeal reflux. And mm. that acid reflux and that LPR mm. is mm. the devil. Um, mm. I started noticing um, a tremendous decrease in my range um, mm -hmm. vocal fatigue, um, and I just thought maybe I'm tired, you know, okay, my allergies. I made up every excuse that I could until I finally just, my voice, I mean, I was coming home hoarse. I hadn't been hoarse in years. Um, so I finally went to the E and my ENT doctor. He said, oh no, it's, it's laryngopharyngeal. And he said there were some slight lesions. He said, but it's reversible. Wow. Um, so they put me on a regimen. Um, I got back with a vocal coach and I had to see a speech pathologist. So, and one of the main culprits is um, the, the reflux. So I had to change some things in my diet and they put me back on medications for that. Um, and my water intake was extremely off. So wow. water is like worth its weight in gold. Um, I've had to up my water intake and then learning some basics all over again. I wasn't breathing correctly because I was literally, while I was singing, I was panicking. So I was going to mm -hmm. my go-to, I can squall through this, or I can, mm -hmm. I can do this note through this, singing over it, and you know, probably was causing the damage that it did cause. But for me now, vocal hygiene is a must. Um, wow. Practicing, um, as Melvin was talking about, this straw, that mm -hmm. the, the vocal straw, I just learned how to do that. It's amazing. I've been doing that every other day now. Um, um, lip trills, um, warming up, making sure, you know, my voice is properly um, warmed up when I, when I am singing now. Um, just some different things and making sure I'm staying on top of the vocal hygiene, um, making sure that, you know, I'm not ex overexposing myself, or overusing my voice. Um, a lot of times with my kids, my grandkids, I holler. So I had to stop all of that. <laughs> um, I just do it, my mama. So um, vocal hygiene is extremely important if you want to maintain the longevity 
of your boys. Um, and I just had to buckle down and say, you know what? I got to do this. You know, there are no easy roads to this. Um, it takes work. Um, and thank God I'm married to who I'm married to, where he can help me if I need to get in here and, and work out something. You know, it's mm -hmm. there. But mm -hmm. as Melvin was saying, you got to practice. You got to work at it. You got to be intentional about maintaining that vocal hygiene and good vocal health. Yeah. Talk, talk about, um, you know, even in that, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we would go out on the road um you know for tours and things of that sort how how much you know how important is is physical rest as well as exercising playing you know to play on that as well with vocals it's extremely important um because the the stronger you are physically because again breathing is the basis or the base to mm -hmm. effective singing and your core all of that matters um, you have to maintain some type of physical, you know, strength or physical, you know, maintain that to support that breathing. Because I'm telling you, ain't nothing like a note gone wrong with bad breathing. So <laughs> <laughs> that's important. Um, and rest was one of the things that was my issue. You know, a lot of us feel like, okay, we're superheroes. I, if I get three hours of sleep, I'm good. And that wasn't working for me. Right. Um, fatigue and all of that can cause physical fatigue can cause vocal fatigue so right. it's the you know and i just started you know what i'm gonna try to be in bed at a, at, at a decent hour you know to get mm -hmm. some rest um to make sure my body can reset and repair itself so right. all of that is important wow you got a little something something you want to bless the people with today <laughs> yeah, yeah actually um said and i are working on some stuff but this is a song that was on um my first solo album, Soul Inspiration, it was written by my former brother-in-law. He's now deceased, Duncan Butler. But it speaks to what we're going through right now. Um, and shameless plug, Seth and I are working on a record. Um, yes. It's called Seth in June. Yeah, so yes. um, we've been in the house working on stuff. Um, and y'all can follow us on Instagram, said in June, the letter N. Mm -hmm. um, but the song says, it's just like heaven and the fact that here in Charlotte last night, we had riots. They were out tearing up stuff oh, and wow. all over this country because wow. of the situation that's going on with uh, Mr. Floyd and his untimely death or murder, however mm -hmm. you want to say it. Um, but it just talks about um, <clears throat> if there was no color, you'd be my brother. Um, if just like heaven, we all would be as one. We yeah. all would live in peace. We all would live in harmony. So it's just a snippet. Um, so it's on my first record, but we're going to re-release it. Oh, great. I remember that song. That was a great song. Yeah. You got Seth mm -hmm. playing with you? Yeah. Wow. It's just like heaven. Oh. If just like heaven, yeah, there would be peace on earth. Oh, if just like heaven. Mm -hmm. There would be no color. Oh, you'd be my brother. We all would be. Oh, if just like heaven, oh, yeah, I want to go there, just like heaven, there would be no racism, no, 
just like him, heaven. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's going to be incredible. Yeah. Ted, get what? on the camera. He said, get on the camera. <laughs> CT, bless your heart. He said, I'm, he in. I'm so he in. He said, bless your heart. <laughs> We got we got a lot of a lot of questions um, inquiring about the colors, the colors that okay. you're actually using. What's what's your approach to that? Um, like it's hard to explain, but like stuff like hard stuff, I see red. Say that's say wow. looking. Hey, see, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he a straight clown, and y'all know it. <laughs> um, soft stuff like just then I saw blues. Like I see blue. Um, I don't know if that means because it's warm or mm -hmm. to warm it up. Um, and then on certain things, I'll see like a pink, which mm. is like soft, but, but still like girly, real, like playful. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why I see that. Yeah, That's so. incredible. And, and, and do you actually visualize that as you're singing or is that more in the study that you're, you know, when you're actually preparing for a song or both? Both. Um, when I hear a song or when like somebody sends me a song, I see mm -hmm. colors. Um, and like just then I'm singing, I saw blue. I see like soft blues. Um, don't know why, but yeah. That's incredible. And that, and that, that just kind of, that just kind of adds to the importance of, um, you know, adding a visual to, to your audio you know, what you hear, oh, yeah. you know, search it, searching out to, to try to make that visual connection because that, yeah. that actually adds to your execution as well. That is incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Wow. We got any more questions? I don't see. Any more questions for little June Thompson? In the chats or Facebook? Hey, June. Hi. Big B, what's oh, up? There he is. Um, I did have a question. Um, first off, I we've never had a conversation about this color thing, which is so That's incredible. Really? That's incredible. Um, oh, wow. Well, I mean, you Talk know, the study on it, the, the actual, they call it a condition. It's not really condition, but it's called synesthesia. And so mm -hmm. what it oh. sound, certain so sounds register in colors, sounds right. register in colors. So there's a correlation between um, sounds and colors. And I remember years ago, um, there was a study done that like after certain notes on a, on a keyboard on a piano, like they would mm -hmm. actually, register in the, that color or whatever so oh, wow. even if you even if you look scripturally speaking um i don't want to we we can talk about that offline but it's yeah i mean right. just you're thinking about like the colors that we see in heaven um how mm -hmm. the, how that relates to sound and all of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff but that's a whole nother whole nother topic but wow. my question is um okay you talked a little bit about you know when you you know you kind of did the vocal reset and all of that kind of stuff and we've talked about it a little bit before but can you tell us a little bit about you're amazing when you go from your squall back to like a real soft voice, you know, and of course in gospel, they want that hard squalling or whatever, but like mm -hmm. there's an art to squalling. Like you don't have to yes. throw your voice out and, do, and, and right. squall. So talk a little bit about, you know, how you discovered that and, and talk to us a little bit about that. Um, well, actually, <laughs> I think I did it by accident. So um, when, when I was much, much younger, I was thinking with Pastor Key and, um, I don't even know what happened that day. I think, and it probably was on the Yes Lord album. I think it was. And it was an accident. And I can't verbally articulate how, but there's a place you can go in your voice. And if I were to say it technically, um, it's you kind of close everything up mm -hmm. and then just force a little bit of air to come out. That mm -hmm. way it, it kind of it rubs and it creates a squall. So mm. for me, I don't know if that's the proper way, but um, again, and there is a way that you can do it without blowing your voice out. Right. Um, yeah, so I think controlling the less air I, can, I, I blow out or the less air I allow to escape while trying to hit a note or say a phrase causes that friction. Mm. So um, that's the best way I can explain it. Cool. <laughs> We, we had a question here that says, um, how do you, and it's from Michaela, um, okay. how, do you, how do you determine the best singing key for yourself? Um, 
I normally sing in one of three keys in the session. Um, so there are times, well, I'll, I'll put it like this. When I get a song that may be potentially too high, thank God I'm really a contralto. So I can mm -hmm. flip down if I need to um, and just do a bit of maneuvering and try to sing smart with it. That way it doesn't keep me at my peak mm -hmm. or I don't have to reach for a note that I may not be able to reach. Um, mm -hmm. So you kind of, kind of got to play around with it. Um, but it, you know, it's just different with certain songs. Um, there are songs that I do have to lower, you know, because right. I, I sing lower. But that being said, the songs that may specifically be a little higher, I can flip down a little bit and just use the, the vastness of a range that is a little mm -hmm. lower. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And that, that actual technique really works, um, you know, with, with a lot of my students. I teach them to, to actually identify identify their lowest, you know, lowest note in the range versus the mm -hmm. highest note in the range. And then the objective mm -hmm. is to whatever song that you're, you're prompting to sing, that you make sure that that song is in a key that, that doesn't reach the peak of your range and doesn't reach the, the lowness right. of your range. That way you're always comfortable, you know, right. your approach even when you sing. So yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's, I mean, that's great to, but I mean, with you, your range is just like, I mean, you sing soprano, alto, and tenor. It just kind of, kind of. <laughs> Some <laughs> days. So, so, yeah, so know what the song is. I mean, because I've, I've you know, even with Tri-City Days, I've seen you, you know, Donald will give you a song and it's, and, it, and it's here, or he say, hey, Joan, try this, sing this. And then it's like, right. you know, and, right. and like, for instance, I think it was, um, what was it? Um, what was it, the trio, uh, Cast Your Cares? Cast your cares, yeah. Yeah, and you actually sung the, the soprano. The soprano, on the track. Yeah, yeah. So soprano it just kind of really depends on what's you know how the song is or what the song is actually presenting at that point in time. So right. Um, and and obviously a lot you know just in case a lot of people may not know you know Lejeune song with Tri City she you know sung tenor. So yes. She was sing tenor <laughs> in deep. So. Sang, <laughs> she was sing tenor in background, and then she would you know, sing her lead, either an alto or soprano, or whatever the song was calling for. So, um, incredible, just incredible. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. I don't see any on my end. Al, you see any on your end? Nope, don't see any. Um, June, you, okay, one just came in and then we will bring on Blanche. Okay. Um, man, you gotta give people flowers while they are living. June, you, you look great, you sound great. Um, Thank you. We respect your marriage. You and um, Seth working together, man. It's just um, just want to give you that th those um flowers. Man. <laughs> Thank you. More of an etiquette. Have you ever gone through? Um, should I, should I answer this question? Ask the question. Am I still okay? Uh, more. Of, it's more of an etiquette. Have you ever gone through disrespect in the workplace? If so, how did you deal with it? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. All the time. Um, I've been doing this for over 30 years. And a lot of times, especially when I started doing solo artist stuff, and there were times that said couldn't go. Um, and my assistant is a female. So it's pretty hard for women. Um, you know, they promoters can get sideways. They don't have your money. Or they feel like, you know, they can just do whatever and not hold up to the end of the bargain a contract set contract says this and they mm. do this um i just rely on the holy ghost with that because there's sometimes <laughs> when i've had yeah i've had to go with it and get out about it and call somebody or handle it right or there have been times when um you know i had to let it slide the holy ghost would tell me the holy spirit would tell me you know what close your mouth don't worry about it I got mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there there have been plenty of times that you know, etiquette wise, and then there have been some nasty artists. Um, so you just gotta, you know, I just I just believe in it, it being kind and being respectful. Um, and Donald Lawrence taught us something early on. It costs you nothing to be nice. Right. So yeah. being nice and kind to everybody, um, giving what I expect back. Um, and just being able to be on my P's and Q's where the business is concerned. Um, again, we got a lot of shysters out there. And then we got a lot of good people that are integral, that do what they're supposed to, that handle you 
you know, well. Um, again, you just got to know, know how to flip it sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I've had that. So, you know, I've had to deal with it accordingly. Yeah. June, thank you. We love you. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Thank y'all for having me. Absolutely, Joan. Love you. Got to have you back, babe. Love, love you. Okay, take care. All right. Remember, June has an album coming out, and and the song she just sang is is already re, re, um, released, and I'm I'm glad to hear that they are um, going to re-release it, and it, it is definitely relevant. Um, her colleague is here, and we saw her join in, um, and, and it's amazing. All of these artists are in the Carolinas. Don't right. hate, just move down <laughs> south. Born. <laughs> to James and Mary McAllister in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Blanche McAllister Dykes came from a musical family. I think on some of the um, advertisements we added a C. Uh, Blanche, if you see that and you seen that, you are you're a class act because you didn't say nothing to us and we apologize, but we got it right on here. Her musical gifts were put to, to use throughout her childhood as she sang with her siblings and her mother in a family group until she was 13 years old. At a young age, it was prophesied that she would stand before thousands and sing before nations. After completing high school, Blanche attended Fayetteville State University, where she was afforded the opportunity to start another facet of her life, acting in theatrical productions. In 2002, the Lord opened a door for Blanche to expand her ministry as she began singing with gospels, gospel genius Donna Lawrence throughout her time with Donna Lawrence. You all call him DL. Blanche was blessed to sing with both the Tri-City Singers and Donna Lawrence and company. She has begun, she has been featured on the following CDs, Donna Lawrence in Tri-City, the finale CD, These Nails, and God's favor, along with Sherry Jones Moffett and LaJune Thompson, who we just uh, just experienced, Donna Lawrence and company, I Speak Life CD right now, in tribute to Andre Crouch, and coming strong with Jason Nelson, Law of Confessions CD. I've got something, Citizens and Law of Confession with Toby White Darks, Your Righteous Mind CD, Spiritual and Not Making Sense, Making Faith. Since with Donna Lawrence has given Blanche the opportunity to work with and provide background vocals for various artists' greats, some of which we love, included here the Karen Clark Shear, um, Karen Clark Shear, the Clark Sisters, yep, mm -hmm. Pastor Marvin Sapp, Bishop Hezekiah Walker, uh, Kim Burrell, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Mary Mary. She was also featured on the Myron Butler CD titled Worship on the Song, Holy One, and the L. Spencer Smith and Testament CD, Statement on the Song, He'll Come. Welcome to the Vocal Shed for the very first time, uh, Blanche McAllister Dykes. Blanche. I think you're muted. She's still muted. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me now? Praise hey, the Lord, hey. everybody. Praise hey, the Lord, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Great seeing you. <laughs> Likewise. It's Glad so to see you to all here. as well. Glad to see all as well. All as well. God is good. Yeah. He really is. It's Great. good to see everybody. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get in. Um, yeah. Alpha, say Alpha. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, Mitch, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> I am great. You look well. My God. Yeah. Y'all want y'all to know that June almost took me out of here. I said, now, wait, I can't right. talk to my Lord. So which one are we going to do? <laughs> we're going to talk or we're going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's an honor to have you, sis. It's an honor to be here, for real. Let's do it. Talk about, for me, talk, well, well actually, actually, from the perspective of, you know, as a, as a solo artist, and background singer. Um, talk about the, the disciplines of that for you. Um, you know, I, I often 
tell people, you know, you have to know where you're called and you mm-hmm. govern yourself accordingly. So, you know, where I'm called, what I'm called to do at my church, I do differently than what I'm called to go do behind Donald Lawrence. Right. It's different from what I'm called to do when they're asking me to come and give what God has given me personally. Um, right. So the, the discipline is just really knowing the difference. Um, but once, you, you know, once you submit, submission is submission. So, you know, when you're allowing God to just kind of lead you and trusting that he's going to, you know, use you to do what needs to be done. You know, mm-hmm. it helps with it helps with everything else. But I believe you, you're supposed to 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 look and echo what's being said where you're called. Wow. You know, God may give you something new to impart in them, but even in those instances, a lot of times it's confirmation of something that's already been said. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, the discipline is submission. That's really it in a nutshell. And I mean, that ain't really technical. That's just, that's a hard right. posture. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, and then from a, you know, from a vocal standpoint, how do you, how do you, how do you distinguish the two? I mean, how do you, how do you prep for the two? Because you, um, you know, just like, just like June, you, you know, you guys have had, and, and I even shared this with, you know, with a lot of um, praise and worship, you know, leaders, um, the, the vocal stamina that they need to have to be able to, you know, exalt, do all of that and still, yeah. um, you know, sing and, and deliver. So how do you, how do you do that, you know, from the perspective of, you know, you knowing you gotta, you gotta sing this background and then at the same time, be ready for the mic toss when it's you know, your time to actually leave. That first thing is going to be, of course, preparing before you get there. So typically, Donald, he may not give us a song list until we get there. Right. But typically, mm-hmm. it's stuff we've already done. So we just know to kind of refresh everything. Um, you know, and if we haven't done anything in a while, listen to the last thing that we did. Um, so coming prepared, you know, I've already listened mm-hmm. to it. I've refreshed my ear and my spirit to what it was. And then on top of that, knowing, staying focused on why I'm there. So like we would do BMI, you know, that we would be there about three or four days. And anybody that's ever done BMI or Stellars or any of those events, you know, there are a million things going on at the same time. You have like six or seven different events. I went to none of them. I think I met, I take that back. I may have gone to one. I mm-hmm. went to one, and that was um, the Sam Franklin thing that they were doing for Kim Burrell years ago. Uh, but even with that, I knew that I could do nothing else. So knowing, you know, why you're going to do what you're going to do and being able to say no to the other things that might be a distraction and keep you from getting your rest. And, you know, those things are as important as, like you said, like I said before, studying your music, coming prepared, knowing that, you know, you got to be ready and, and staying tuned in. You know, mm-hmm. stay tuned in so you know if there's a move or there's a shift, you're tapped in, you can just move with the shift. You know, right. you, you don't get the chance to tap out. You don't get to tap out. Wow. That's incredible. Um, talk about, um, in addition to that, um, talk about, uh, in, ter- in terms of like, you know, we do studio recording. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the, you know, for, for a lot of singers, because a, a, obviously a lot of people tend to um, think that their live approach into singing will work in the studio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, talk about, you, you know, because a, a lot of people don't really understand, you know, they, they hear the final product. And, you know, when you actually perform that song live, they think that, you know, obviously you, you reproduce that, you know, even in a studio setting. But yeah. they, but they, I think they fail to realize that the work and the ethic that, that goes into the studio session um, is discipline. totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Than the live. Speak on that a little bit. I'm, I get tickled because I was one of the ones that really thought it was the same before I'd done it. Um, mm-hmm. I had done, you know, a few things in the past and, and, you know, not anything that really required a whole lot of me. And then the first recording I did with Donald was when we did um, the Clark, uh, Karen Clark's, um, not the final Karen, but the one after that, I can't, I, uh, The Heavens Are Telling. And that was yeah. my very first time. And, and, and so we did that live, but I did not do the overdub studio sessions after that mic. Right. But the very first time I had to go in the studio and do overdub sessions, I was looking at y'all like, now do what? You know, so I had to quickly adjust. 
Yeah. And I will say, being with Tri City and being with company, uh, it, uh, you learn so quick. You know, you're you're always listening to the to what's going on around you, um, and you adjust. You, I mean, you and it's a quick adjustment. You don't get a long time right. to adjust, right. but it's it, it is another discipline. It's number one, understanding that there's this one sound that that they're looking for as it relates to everybody, not just blending, but really saying the same thing you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. the, the color you know the colors may be a, l a little different but once it comes together it's a beautiful picture so not too much red no when to you know pull back a little bit that's too much of that color we need some more you know so it's it, it definitely is a different i ain't gonna say monster it's a different um discipline but it's a good one because yeah. it teaches you how to you know to flow into i love singing beside you and Dwayne. oh man come on i know lejeune agrees with me singing with you and Dwayne. <laughs> It just like it, it sharpens our ear and honestly it's just like a glove like we can just kind of I don't know what that is I, I can't even explain it but it's like y'all bring everything center and it's just a easier ride it just really is it y'all are amazing uh, yeah I, 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 amazing. I've always felt and I know Dwayne Dwayne um probably would, would definitely feel the same as that because we, we, we both have, have, you know, especially in the higher register, we have a certain break in our voice. And when you, when you and, you, and Lejuna are there, it's just like y'all cover that. Whereas the lower register, you know, so we, we in other words, we are able to identify um, where we may fall a little short and then allow gotcha. you guys just to kind of kind of cover that. And it's just, I mean, it's like magic. It really is. It's just like, it's incredible. That's how we feel. And when a jewel by me, we're going to cut up, but it's going to be good. Right. Ooh, now we're going to cut up. <laughs> now we are going to cut up. And there's going to be a cut up. But it's just, again, it's so good. But, I, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this. I have been singing with Lejeune since I was 12 years old. Whoa. Did not we, know came out of, we came out of the same ministry. What? 12 years old. I've always admired Lejeune. We have all, everybody in the city of Fairville, the state of North Carolina, anyone that has ever heard Lejeune was like, that's what I want. I want that right there. And so now, you know, it really, although it takes me back to those days, it's another something because I have another understanding yeah. of yeah. what we're doing and another appreciation. Um, she's wow. just been my shiro for so long. But singing with her, we're going to cut up, but it's, it's going to be a good time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> talk about, talk about your, um, your vocal care. How do, you, how do you preserve what you do vocally? I mean, what, what are some of the things you do? Water. Water and more water. I drink so much water. I go to the restroom more than anybody that I know, and they think that it's a bladder issue. No, it's a water issue. It's it's a catch twenty two for me in, in, to a, to an extent because I have I know that I have mucus issues, mm -hmm. um, so I have to stay up on my um, allergy medicine for one. But then of course that's going to dry you out, so you have to drink water for that, right? Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. on top of that. If there's any wind, it's gonna dry me out. I gotta keep water on that. So for me, I have to hydrate days before, like days, days, days before. Um, lots of rest, knowing what I can and cannot eat. I try to not do a lot of dairy. I don't totally mm -hmm. deny myself from dairy, but I do limit my dairy um, because again, the mucus, and that's gonna mm -hmm. make what I have to do that much harder. Um, another funny story is I come from a very loud family. We're very boisterous, we're all very, very, very loud. And uh, never forget, we were doing the Tri-City tour and, um, uh, oh Lord, help me. Uh, Richard Odom got on the, on the bus and I started asking him questions. He said, hey, 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 why are you talking so hard? <laughs> I, this is my first time meeting him. I said, I don't know. I just always talk this hard. He said, change how you talk and it'll change how you, you know, the stamina of your mm -hmm. voice. You, you'll take And I, I have to consciously catch myself. But ever since that day, Mike, I don't know if you remember, we were in Maryland. Ever yeah. since that day, he made me cry. He sang something. I can't remember what it was. And I wept for a few seconds. Then I got myself together. He got me together. We kept on moving. I cried because he was singing something that touched my soul. And um, but, but I've noticed the difference, you know, when I'm more disciplined in how I speak. You know, my friends catch me. You're laughing too hard. You know, in those, they catch me and they reel me back in. But those things matter because they all add up because you look at how long you've been using your voice and, you know, having to go in all these different atmospheres and you know, not even talking about the spiritual part, just speaking from the physical, right. it, it can be taxing. But for me, it's, those things are important to me, making sure that I'm taking care of the mucus, staying hydrated, resting, 
um, and just, you know, eating things that my body likes as opposed to doesn't like. But that um, acid reflux and mucus and all of that stuff is very real. Wow. Talk about, um, talk about, um, because, you, you know, everybody, everybody kind of have, have known you as, a, like, a, like you said, a background singer. And, you know, every now and then, uh, you know, you'll lead a song here and there. Now you're embarking upon, you know, the actual solo arts. Talk about that transition. It, it, it can be scary at times, mm -hmm. but I remember telling the Lord, um, I, I never was one that had to be in the front, but if right. you give me something to say, I'll take the mic. Right. Um, so the moment he started giving me something to say, I became a little bit more confident in being able to say what he told me to say, but I'm the first to tell the Lord, now, Lord, you say it. Now, surely mm. you're not going to let me, you know, fall on my face. Um, and also not being anxious, knowing that there, that everything is an assignment, knowing where you're assigned. Um, and when he gives me something and says, no, I want you to take the lead on it. Although mentally I may go to that scary place, I immediately flip into, you know, he started it, he's going to finish, he's got you. There's something for you to do, go do, you know. And wow. uh, so, you know, it's just, it, it is a, it, there are a lot of times where I do have to talk to myself and say, you're okay, you're going to be all right. Uh, but it's so much easier when you can lean on, you know, your brothers and sisters in the background. Yeah. But when you're in the front, it's a different responsibility, which, of course, requires another discipline, which requires yeah. another level of boldness, which requires another level of sacrifice. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. So I just literally, wherever he tells me to go, I go. There it is. Yeah. You want to sing a little bit? Bless us a little bit? Uh, why not? Uh, um, I actually, we, Don, we did a song a few years ago and Donald was gracious enough to let me put it on my record that um, we're trying to get done now. Um, well, I, it's done. We're trying to, you know, get it ready to be released. But he wrote a song that I sing that says, Our words, our words, realize the power of our words. Oh, Yes. Our words, the harm we can do with our words. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in the Father's sight. May the words I speak touch somebody's life. I won't harm you yeah. with my words, but I'll encourage you. With my words, I won't harm you, no, no. With my words, but I'll encourage you. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. In the Father's side, let it please you, Lord. May the words I speak touch somebody's life. Yeah, June, you're right. Tone is everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mike, we got some questions here, and then we're yeah. going to... Um, um, my goodness, I want to start it off by asking uh, Blanche, how, can you teach or how some singers, I mean, they, they smile while they're singing. It's just, um, is, it, is, it, is, it, is that teachable? Because, you, I mean, you were, you know, you have the ugly face and I think that's needed. <laughs> but my God, I mean, the, the smile and, and the joy, what is that? Well, it's, it's a hard thing. But I also, if I be honest, I also tell people, um, number one, believe what you're singing. That in itself is like, okay, God, I trust you. That's my reminder. I, I believe, mm -hmm. I, I trust you. And then the other thing is, I tell my background singers, smiling helps us blend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're smiling, we're all doing, and you know, it. it so I think it's dual fold. That and you want, you know, you kind of want people, if you smile to people, they'll smile back. 
Mm -hmm. But smiling, honestly, if you look in the mirror and you sing and you smile, of course it changes the sound, but it also, it it, it does something to my heart. I I don't know no other way to explain it. But for me, it's just how I feel. I'm I'm happy that I get to do this, even when I don't feel like doing it. I'm happy that I can do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that whole, you know, and not being deep, but smiling, number one, we should smile when we're singing. You know, they want to pin us as, and by they I'm referring to the person on the outside looking in that may not understand. Um, they're looking for why do I, why would I want to serve this guy you're talking about? Why would I want, what, you know, yeah. why would I want to do what y'all are doing? Because we're happy. Right. You know, right. You know, we, I, the joy of the Lord really is my strength for real. So it's really kind of my external expression of what's going on in my heart. Um, but, uh, you know, technically it also helps with the sound. Absolutely. It does. Mm-hmm. I smile at people when I'm walking. I may not speak. I may just smile. And nine times out of ten, they'll smile back. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, and I think, I think too, it adds to it adds to the confidence of of the moment that's going on too. You know? Absolutely, Mike. Um, Absolutely. You know, because when you when you actually show that visual, then that I mean, that's a whole nother connection. Absolutely. Uh, Versus somebody just singing and like, oh, God, I hope I get through the song. So it, it, it actually adds to that connection to what you're yeah. actually delivering at that point in time. That's incredible. And reminding you and reminding yourself, it's really not about your strength. Right. You know, it's your availability, but it's his strength. It really is his strength. So, yeah. Um, Al, you got the next question or, or something? Yeah, someone mentioned something you, about me. Next year, send you some. Yeah. They wanted to know specifically, and and June, if you're still in the chat, you can definitely um, you can definitely um, audio in as well. Um, specifically regarding vocal rest, what is that like for you guys? My phone will ring all day without an answer. I will lay in my bed till I'm done sleeping. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm sure there are days that I do not sing. Uh, no more than a, a, a line or two on a commercial on the TV because that's probably what I'm watching. Um, mm-hmm. But so for me, yeah. So for me, vocal rest is really just not giving, not giving out any energy vocally to anything right. or anyone, and allowing myself to rest, be at rest, whether I'm laying in my bed or on my couch or wherever. You that's know, good. but that's really what it is to me, resting. I mean, really, really resting, whether my eyes are closed or my body is just still. Um, but not answering that phone. And believe it or not, when we're on social media, especially now, that is bringing yes. tension. It brings tension. Yes, yes. You see me blinking my eyes? <laughs> tension. <laughs> that is good. I, yeah, it's bringing tension. So, you know, yeah, I mean, vocal, so vocal rest is literally just that, allowing your body and your spirit and everything to come to rest literally rest and you hear the greatest yes. you you hear the sweetest stuff when you rested oh yeah listen yeah you had some ad june yeah well she did i was gonna say you know disconnecting from social media and just everything else um and my mom taught me something before she passed away i kept bugging her about something calling her and saying mama i need you to pray for this pray for this pray she said you know what Go buy some flowers and go create a garden. Go do something yeah, else. That's good. Create a garden. Yes. Else. Nature, there's something about nature and being outside and experiencing another level of beauty and creation when you're that's trying good. to disconnect. And she told me, she said, if you get in your yard, God gonna talk to you. And I'll be <laughs> yeah. down if he didn't. Um, <laughs> so just discon- learning how to disconnect, I think, you know, in this whole shelter in place. You know, I've learned how to, everything that I thought was essential mm-hmm. wasn't essential mm-hmm. and wasn't necessary. Mm-hmm. The stuff mm-hmm. that I was making myself busy with was unnecessary. And once I freed up that time to get the rest that I needed, both both physically, spiritually, mentally, and psychologically, everything just starts to connect. You can see clear, you can, you can hear, you can just, you know what I'm saying? It just makes sense to disconnect sometimes. Wow, that's great. And I love that we're shedding a light that disconnect is not always a bad. When you say disconnect, yeah. you say it with such a negative connotation, and that's really not right. true. It is, it is necessary. My father yeah. used to tell me, 
my father used to tell me, um, baby, you need to, I, I'm sorry I woke you, baby, you need to put your phone on Do Not Disturb. And I said, well, dad, if I put my phone on Do Not Disturb, I'm going to miss something. He said, well, if wow. you're resting, you need to miss it. If you're resting, wow. you, you know, so y'all literally, my dad left seven months, almost seven months ago to the day almost. Yeah. Yeah. When I tell you since he has left, I have put my phone on Do Not Disturb almost every night. And it has been the best Me too. sleep I have ever wow. had. I mean, wow. ever. I have never slept this good. That's wow. good. That's Disconnecting good. is necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary. Someone asked about, the, you know, how do you how do you prepare, or, or what's the preparation when you're when you're actually dealing with with an overabundance of mucus? Cutting dairy out altogether, which is how so hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, dairy, sugar, it's I mean, it's so hard to do. And believe it or not, caffeine is not great for us. We know that it's a quick fix right. when you don't have any voice, but it's just, you know, I think I I, I want menthol to disappear. I like forever, yeah. like. Yeah. You know, I understand that, I mean, I, I'm just playing, I didn't mean forever, but you, you know what I'm saying. We, we think menthol is the fix, but it's actually not, it's, you know, it's just, of course, it's just a number. But the main preparation is cutting out dairy. Like, if you know, you have to sing at least a couple of days before, cut the dairy out and definitely mm -hmm. doing the, doing the, um, you know, I, I like to do an antihistamine at night. I'm not a doctor. I like to do an antihistamine at night and I'll do like a Claritin or something in the daytime. Um, right. The guafenesin does, the mucinex doesn't really work for me, but a lot of people love mucinex. But you get something that's going to dry it up. But while it's drying up, you have to stop eating or putting the things in your body that make it comfortable and not want to leave. Right, so the preparation right. is, you know, cutting out those things that are, that are going to make it want to stay and putting in those things that are going to drive it out. So that's what that preparation is. It's, you know, and again, I love teas. I've been trying to come up there for years and God just has not manifested that through me yet. Glory to God. But it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> you and Lejeune actually, oh, we actually all three could, 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 um, could um, speak on this. How do, you, how do you become a quote unquote go-to background singer? What are some of the characteristics of, of, of a go-to background singer? Versus, you know, whether it be studio, whether it be live, you know, what makes people want to call you to sing background? What I mean, what are some of the, the positive traits to that? Or why do you feel like people always calling you to do background? Being prepared, I know. You know, just no, th th if nothing else, people know that when you come, you understand that number one time is money. And if we yeah. just be honest, you know, time is money. So they want to know that people are going to come prepared um, yeah. and that they're going to be on time that they they play well with others you know some of the common stuff honestly you know they play yes. well with others you know is those things matter you know they matter yeah. so yeah so, so yeah also um and this is i learned this um i had some background singers um a few years ago and everybody's an artist now you know that's no shade to anybody <laughs> but everybody's an artist now yeah. and i still sing background for people um, and one of the greatest lessons I've learned is when you are hired to do a job, do mm -hmm. that job. Right. Okay. If they invite you in as a background singer, I don't need you trying to oversing the artist. Do that job you've been called to do. Um, do that. And one of the most teachable, do that. The te one of the most teachable moments I've seen and learned <laughs> Um, and this is what keeps you working. We've, I've done this for over 30 years. So, and, and, and I thank God because he's a God that will sustain you mm -hmm. and will create callbacks for you. Mm -hmm. And in it all, I, I feel that longevity depends on your attitude and your ego yeah. or the mm -hmm. lack thereof. Um, a yeah. lot of us have these egos that are astronomical now. Social media has created some monsters that we can't contain. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with that being said, know how to leave your ego. I don't care how many Stellas you got. If they called you to do background, leave the Stellas at the door. Come in and let's do this job. And let's do it with excellence, integrity, and right. none of the other stuff. Um, again, I've seen it happen so many times. Um, and I think, as, as Blanche said, play well with others. Um, it's one thing you go in a room and you see somebody closed off and everybody's mingling. I mean, you have your quiet time and everything. But that attitude and that ego, check it. Just check it. Yeah. 
If because if you say yes, if if you say yes, I'm gonna do a thing, then you're committed to what you say. Right. You yes. know, if you don't want to yes. do it, say I'm yes. not gonna be able to do it. And again, that's your right. I don't think every opportunity is yes. there are some times where we get a call and it's like, you know, you may you may the spirit may say, not this one. Not, not. Right. And, not you know, for no and for no other reason for no other reason than no. You know, yeah. I don't always ask God why, especially if right. to be honest, there's a time where I'm like, but Lord, they said, and that could, you know, you're looking at the benefits of it, and he's going, I said no. So, you know, responding yeah. in that. But like you just said, absolutely, knowing we go for what, if they say, if you say, yes, I'm going to do it, mm-hmm. go prepare to do it and bring your best go self there. Yeah. Bring your, your best, best bring your best self. That's that attitude. Yes. That's your preparation. Yeah. You know, you can't cut up yes. all day. You know, you got to rest. You know, you have to be vocally prepared. <laughs> to do right. it as well mm-hmm. so you know you're, you're vocally prepped you studied your music you're there and your best self is ready to work that's and you want you want to leave and they say now that was now i, I would love to use you again you know mm-hmm. that's what you want absolutely. you want that mm-hmm. yeah absolutely mm-hmm. you want that call back mm-hmm. right so how do you connect like say for instance if you're you're not in a big city or you know areas where a lot of that is happening how do you, how do you kind of get into that how do you kind of find your way into that into into that um that arena so to speak social media i think is one of the best tools I think it's sometimes it can be overused. Yeah. But sometimes I think it's underused too. Some things we follow up on and it'd be the stuff that don't really matter, but the stuff we really want to do, we miss it because we distracted by the foolishness. Um, right. But, but you know, it's, it's a lot, sometimes it's just a sacrifice. So, you know, somebody is coming to town, you know, go, it may be a little bit out the city limits, but go, you know, get to where it is. And you know, I always tell people, it's so funny. I've watched God orchestrate the things in my life. It hasn't been a lot of auditioning and it hasn't been because I'm so great at what I do. It's literally been the plan of God, but it's been listening and being where he tell you to be. You get there, something's waiting for you that you didn't even know was there, you know? Right. So, you know, staying tuned in, but also staying ready. Yeah. And, and, and I, and, you know, Donald has already, you know, has always shared, you know, as far as artists and singers that, um, you know, like you said, going and, and, and supporting other other events and things of that sort. Um, because the reality of, you, you know, if you are an artist or a singer and you are the best one in your room, then as far as progress and growth, it's going to be yeah. it's going to be stagnated. So Absolutely. the more you can get yourself out and, you know, be in, you know, be around others and stuff like that, then you'll start, you know, especially if you're just kind of trying to learn the craft to begin with, you know, sometimes you got to put yourself in positions to where you can like learn from others to do that. Um, Instead of just, you know, being the best church singer in your church. Which is also necessary, you know, as far as as it relates to being your best self, even at church. And I think sometimes, and and I'm sure this has been said already, I think sometimes too, we discredit not discredit. We forget how important that is. But do you know many an opportunities have come from you have being up, being you know, being in place. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and prepared. You know, you just up there singing at the church anniversary, and you get a call to go sing with Ricky Dillon or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but yeah, absolutely. But I, not to discredit what you're saying. Absolutely. If you're the best in the room, or if you feel like you're the best in the room, you need another room that you can learn from. Because if right. you feel like you're the best, you, you don't feel like there's any Anything you can learn so you're close right. to even learning so but yeah right. I agree completely I agree completely any more questions anybody Al you see anything on your end Lex Al sleep Al's taking notes listen this, <laughs> this, oh my gosh see, I'm just so, playing I'm just playing so I mean you know I, I am definitely <laughs> Um, a student and oh everybody can learn and, and Blanche you said it right just just be ready to learn but, yeah. but the main thing you said be ready to unlearn mm-hmm. that's true yes yep. mm-hmm. and so um, thank you for joining the, the vocal shed it is oh man it's an honor to have you it, it's just great to see you in June y'all yes. y'all getting younger, younger. And- that, so are you come on <laughs> yeah. through. I work come with you brother I work through, you know, I teach Sunday school, so uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm trying to come out of youth ministry, at least graduate to college ministry. 
good luck. Good luck with that. You're great with the kids. You're absolutely great. Yeah, with the kids. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. We salute you? what you're doing. God For bless real. you. God bless you. Please tell us how we can find you, and we, we can't wait to hear this new new music and 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 just just follow your journey. I'm B Max Sings with a Z B M A C S I N G Z. That's at AOL. That's at Facebook. That's on everything except MySpace. Is MySpace a thing anymore? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's how you can find me. And just yeah, definitely keep your girl in prayer. I'm excited about what God is doing. I am. So I'm I'm looking forward to now, not next, but I'm I'm walking through now. So. Absolutely. And you in the Carolinas. I mean, we I know where you know where uh, Kiki's chicken and waffles at. I do what you say. I done the both. Watch it, Sean. Don't start, Sean. Listen, <laughs> listen. Man, I felt the amen on Sean Bigby. I felt listen. It. I, felt it. I got excited. I got excited. <laughs> you know, can you tell us one more time? Um, if if you if you care to, um, if you're able to tell us where we can find you on social media. And um, you you heard your sis, she said you gotta post, you gotta use social media. Yeah. Yes. yes. For you I'm getting better with it. I'm getting better with it. Um, I heard y'all say Kiki, so don't 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 mind me. Um, <laughs> yes. right. I'm on I'm on Facebook, the official Lejeune Thompson. On um, Instagram is Lejeune Thompson underscore Madam Butterfly. And um, the new stand B E B N J U E N E on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you. So we're going to hang out just a little bit longer. Uh, Mel, Thank you. music coming out. Um, of course, um, he's working on new music. everybody's working on new music. If you're on Facebook, Bridget Johnson just followed us. Just join in on Facebook, Charles Roseboro. Um, just join in. Devin is in, in the Facebook room. Kenny, Kenny Leonard, yep, is just joined us on Facebook. What's up, boss? And um, What's up? What's up? So many here inside the Zoom. We have another week. We have two more weeks of the vocal shed. And so all you have to do, all you have to do, just want to give you this protocol. Just, just visit thevocalshed.com slash retreat. We will not be giving out credentials immediately. Check your email. Check your spam. Um, you know, check your junk. The vocal shed is not junk, but sometimes we show up in the junk. Um, we just want to make sure you have the credentials and we don't want these zooms to be hacked. So many stories where these zooms are hacked. So that's, that's the reason why we, we, um, leak the information to you. We don't post a link on, on Facebook. Hacking is real. We want to keep this integral and, and holy and, and fun. So Mike, we want to, um, we want to do some, some final business here. If you've enjoyed yourself in the chat, just kind of, kind of type that in the chat. And um, got a few announcements. Mike, you got something to say here? We're I'm going good. to show a few commercials. And, um, and I'm good. My heart is full. <laughs> say that one more time. I said, I am good. My heart is full. Mm -hmm. Man, the camaraderie, man, y'all have is evident. That's why y'all sound like the way you sound. Um, because off, you know, off the stage, it is, you know, it is, it is phenomenal. Um, the vocalshed.com is always available 24 hours. There's resources on the vocalshed.com. There's free tips. Um, when you join the vocalshed, um, um, you, you're going to instantly learn. There's resources on the vocalshed resource page. There's also a, just want to just wanna leak this out to you. If you go on the vocalshed.com, there's a masterclass opportunity. All you have to do, just go to the vocalshed.com and, and click on Masterclass. There will be eight slots for a one-on-one -on -one masterclass with Mike Young, and just go go over there. Eight slots but over the next three weeks, and just grab one of those slots. And when you when you when you enroll in the one-on-one, -on -one, that nobody else will be in this online masterclass with you. So it's like a class, and you're the only person in the class. Ain't that something? So you're gonna actually get the video from the class, the audio from the class. You're going to also get your own customized workbook, all right, from the class. And then, and if you register today, if you enroll today in the one-on-one -on -one masterclass with Mike, you will also get the vocal oven for free. So just go over to uh, thevocalshed.com, one masterclass, and just check that out. And if that's something that you're interested in, 
um, just enroll. Charles Roseboro says on Facebook, thanks for the info and tips. Yep. So thank you for that. If you're not satisfied, we are not fulfilled. All right. We only enjoy our gifts when you enjoy. The tree never eats its own fruit. And, um, and so these comments fuels us to, to continue to serve you. Um, so Mike, tell, tell them who's coming up next week. And Sean Bigby is already on here and, and tell them what they can expect. Yep, it'll be pretty much the same format. Miss Miss Wyatt would be on with us. Um, excellent songwriter, vocal coach in her own right. Um, and then we may we may have a surprise either next week or the week after that. I got a got another um, guest that I'm actually working to confirm. I, I won't reveal until until he or she confirms. Um, and then and then my brother Sean Bigby, uh, we go back. Actually, Sean and I. A lot of people don't know this. Mm. Sean and I went to school together in college, so mm. we got a long history, man. A long history. So I'm I'm excited to hear uh, what he has to share, not only from songwriting, vocal, but even also as a worship leader. So for a lot of you worship leaders, um, June 13th would actually be a great day for you too um actually uh come on to kind of learn some things awesome so we're going to sign off we're going to stay on a little bit we're going to also facebook you've been wonderful you've been engaging you've been sharing thank you for also starting a replay um uh, folks facebook guys thank you for those hearts we seeing over there thank you for increasing the engagement on the vocal shed with mike young facebook page all right, stay connected, and we're here to serve you all. Jackie Collins just joined in. You're late, but you, we can see you next week. And I think I mentioned Claude Deuce is here. Um, enjoy your day. Remember to go to thevocalshed.com, one masterclass. If you're interested in the one-on-one -on -one masterclass with Mike, your personalized workbook, the video recording of your masterclass, the audio files and then also a free vocal oven audio training this has been great facebook we're leaving you if you're in the private zoom room we're hanging out and we'll be talking with you and no rush we're in no rush just hang out with us and um i'll make sure i won't hang up on my facebook folks but definitely um it was honored to hang out with you so mike this was a good day yes sir Can you hear me? Miss Austin says, thank you in the chat. Someone asked, a, someone asked a question, do they need to register for future zones? So, so no. So the question is no. So only for, we already have your information. If you're on the Zoom, you're, you're good to go. Um, just look, again, just look, you know, check your email. I think there were three emails sent today and you, and you also, if you, if you submitted your phone number, there was a, a, a phone tree. There was a, you got a phone call and just a courtesy call that may, may not happen every, every time, but we're trying to do everything. It's so noisy out here. So we're trying to push the information to you for your convenience. Um, but, but definitely if you can do us a favor, do just do your due diligence, check that spam, check your email. I know you got a lot of emails and look for us, save us, make us safe. And so we can show up and uh, we won't bug you. We won't send you irrelevant stuff. And um, I think you'll be good. You'll be safe. So you don't have to register. Just look for your, um, um, look for your, um, look for us in your email. Now, disclaimer, over 123 people registered today. Once new individuals register, they're gonna get the same credentials. So now it's gonna to have to be first come, first serve. When the Zoom fills up, um, you will be in view only mode on Facebook. Next week we will be um, on Team BGV Facebook page, I believe exclusively, all right? And that's 4,000 singers there, all right? But when you register, you will be inside the Zoom. And if, if you wanna come off camera and like Sean Bigby did and, and interact, that's what we prefer. Um, mm -hmm. miss each other. We, we need to see your face, see your eyes. And, um, 
that makes these experiences wonderful, especially when we, we're, we're streaming, you know, to Facebook and YouTube. Um, you know, it, it just makes it, it makes it better. Plus, if you're trying to network, get your voice out there, be considered as a background singer, they got to see your face. You are the billboard. You know, the person with the most presence has the most power. You know, so we love to see your name, but we want to see your face. Regina has her camera off. All right. So some people are going to mess around and win a free master class if you keep that up. All right. But who else has their camera off? Um, on. Uh, everybody else doing a mannequin challenge. I see Valerie. What's up, Valerie? Y'all just want that free master class. But thank you. For <laughs> thank you for your obedience right now. Uh, and Shamika is, is, see, that's what I'm talking about. See, now that's, that's what we miss, because this is normally live. Roshan is on, um, so we can see you moving. Shamika, we see you, Shamika. Look at these beautiful people. These champs, Lejeune is still with us. Look at there. <laughs> Any other questions? First class today, this was first class. Artists and guests, Shamika, yep, see you. Sanisha Tillman, Yolanda Townsend, thank you for that vibration. Yep. Y'all are so obedient. I dare you to unmute and just and just greet us. And and the more questions. Hey, Salisbury, North Carolina. I was invited uh, invited by Latoya. And I didn't know anything about it, so I'm glad that I was invited. I'm getting a lot of great information, and I've checked out the website, so I look forward to future interaction. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Sean Bigby for inviting me. I appreciate it, and this was really, really valuable for me. I, I really appreciate it. I give vocal lessons, and so I got some tips here that will help me to pass on to some of my students. Oh, great. Glad you joined. Awesome. Thank you, Valerie. I think Carlos got a question. Carlos, you can ask you can ask your question, sir. Okay, I put it in the chat, but what if your range isn't typical for gospel? Like for example, I can't sing A flat, and that's like choir music. That's probably the most popular or one of the most popular notes. I'm naturally a bass. Mm. Is he asking who you at? You asking just in general? Yeah, it's for whoever because I, I feel like I'm, I don't have confidence because my range isn't so high. I can't, mm -hmm. you know, the Todd Delaney's and the uh, Travis Green songs. All those, all these guys are so high. Even back to back in the day to Fred Hammond and Micah Sampley, like all these guys that have the first tenor range. My voice is not like theirs. So, I mean, how can you, I guess? How can you have confidence and, and sing their songs? I, I, Mike, you can pick it up. I'll say, Carlos, just drop that key. Um, yeah, you know, that's what I was going to suggest. Definitely drop that key, and it's going to sound different, um, but at least you will have the best performance when you drop you drop that key. Yeah. And, and it may be, you know, singing background, if you have good amplification, you may have to sing A-flat in your false. In your head, Rich. You yeah. You know, and... and yeah. And I'm sure you can sing it in your in your fake voice, but Mike, you got it. Yeah, I I, I concur with, with with both of those suggestions. Um, a lot of singers, you know, tend to uh, shy away from changing keys. Um, but but there again, if 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 Lejeune if the June Thompson recorded a song at A flat, I guarantee you she went through probably a couple of the keys to determine that A flat was the key for her. So if you're actually going to try to duplicate that song, you have to find the right key that works for you. So don't be, don't be afraid to, to um, alter that key that's gonna give you the best comfort when you're actually delivering that song. Can I offer a little ca caveat there? I mean, are, we, yep. um, are you, Carlos, are you primarily talking about leading the song or are you talking about BGV keys? Um, probably both. I used to sing solos when I was a kid, but uh, the same started singing all the 
homes to that. I'm not confident because I didn't have a lot of opportunities. Okay. On the other hand, I have sang uh, Amazing by Ricky Dillard, but mm -hmm. to that song, for, at least for the male part. So mm -hmm. my suggestion would be, um, and just, just, I mean, I guess a tip or whatever, it's not so much about necessarily the key always. So I mean, find, getting your key, you know, finding a song or putting a song in your key is, is a wise thing to do. So, I mean, I definitely do know what they've said, um, but it's all about what you do within your range. You, can, you kind of get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I, I listen to the singers like B.B. Winans. B.B. Winans doesn't have a huge range, but mm -hmm. it's about what he does within the range that he does have. So you, you may have to, you know, once you find what's your area, what's your key, what's the, you know, what's the range that you have, um, then find the little things that you can do inside of that range. To, uh, to add the color, mm -hmm. add the, the effect, and to add the dramatics or whatever it is that you want to do, the message you want to portray in that song. Um, so every song doesn't, I mean, you know, I know we got a lot of high singing dudes in gospel, but we have some dudes with lower rank. Uh, Anthony Brown doesn't have a high range. His range is, mm -hmm. is he's more of a baritone, but he learned what he can do with his voice. And so it's all about, as you become more comfortable with the key, um, finding out what can I do inside of this range that I do have. That's great, Sean. That's great. Any more questions or shout outs? We're going to hang on for a few more moments. Of course, here we're using the chat now. No, no more Facebook guys. Um, Again, some more shout outs. Cody, Cody is still on. It was good to see, again, the fellow vocal coach, Valerie. Um, Keita Crosby is still on. Shamika, Julie. Hey, Keita. The, the, in the chat, so we talked a lot about the number system. And if you go to thevocalshed.com, you're going to see uh, the number system training that's coming soon. Can you put in the chat if that would be, if, you know, if that's something we need to release sooner than later? That number system is so many benefits in knowing um, where you are, knowing the one, knowing the four, knowing the five. Because if you know the one, you can find the five. If you cannot feel the one, you will not be able to feel the six. And so the root is is important. So that's something we really want to just um, create for you all the number system from a singer's perspective and how to use it and you know it may turn you into a, a worship piano player you, you know so just put that there i see the yeah, chat I, also i actually i actually um can't wait till the 13th because i think sean bigby I've, I've watched him grow in that area and um it's just amazing how he how he's able to use uh, the number system, especially, you know, when he's, when he's in, you know, as a worship leader, he's in that moment where he gets the, the spontaneous, you know, the, the spontaneous songs or the prophetic songs. Um, and you know, the musicians don't know it, but he had, he has, he has created that knack to be able to communicate via the number system and still get um, uh, a great uh, performance and product from that. Um, so definitely uh, Sean, you know, on the 13th, definitely put that in your, your little to-do list for, for the 13th on that as well, to kind of speak more about that. <laughs> I got to go back to practicing me. <laughs> mean, <laughs> 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 of the vocal shed, Mike, you know, um, it gets at the end of the vocal shed live events. There's normally a person that that will sing and you will critique. That's really what, where we see your magic comes comes out. Um, whoever comes off of mute and sing just a snippet of something has to be at least thirty seconds. They will win a free copy of of the vocal <laughs> oven training, uh, digital the digital training. We will shoot it to you. Um, we just shoot us your email and you'll get it. Um, whoever comes off, we're in with this today because we got to have this element. And um, and that's why we're going to reward you because you're going to be brave. Get off. And I'll do it. <laughs> I want to vote. Ajay. 
Okay, Ashley, so what you win, AJ? Yes. Can we see you? Yeah, okay. So um, my hairstylist hasn't been able to get to my house, but yes, yes, yes. So, I have my right now. Wait, I'm about to do it. Okay, let us be the judge. Okay, no, you, 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 you okay. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. So, so what we, what you win is, it's called the vocal oven, and it's basically it's the nine tone scale that we was talking about earlier. Also, mm -hmm. breathing exercises. When you go through the, the the vocal oven, it will help you warm up your voice. It will help with runs, and and just do it religiously every single week. Okay. Okay. To build, to build that vocal stamina. Absolutely. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I present to you, AJ. <gasps> Listen, y'all good. I'm not good yet. I'm still learning, but I got you. <clears throat> I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King. In what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Um, more or less? Yeah, a, a little bit more. Okay. Um, bit more. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We exalt thee, I'm waiting for you to stop me, we exalt thee. We exalt thee, oh Lord. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee, oh Lord. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for stopping me. Right on. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you? Are you? Um, because it, it just may sound may sound a little different here on my um on my end. Um, what's your register? Are, are you actually alto? I don't know. I think I I think I'm a low alto, but somebody told me that I was a mezzo kind of. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what I am exactly, because every person that I, I just, have, I, I just hear a lot of rasp in your voice. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not, that I'm not. That's Corona Jenkins too. Um, she <laughs> oh my goodness! Getting over her. <laughs> oh wow! It's, it's the later stages of it, but but that, and I'm also I have asthma and allergies, so that's why I had a mucus. I got you. One of my. I got you. Yeah, um, I definitely think. I love I love your tones, incredible tones, yeah, yeah, incredible tones. That 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 raspiness, um, and then and I I definitely can see where like um, where the breathing the breathing technique could definitely definitely really help um, in terms of supporting you know supporting those notes those phrasing those phrases. Um, developing, you know, where to breathe, when to breathe, that type thing. Um, but yeah, great, great voice. Yeah, that, yeah, Sean, I agree. I, I love, I love that ras mix of that voice. That's incredible. Um, and I don't know, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't know if that was really intentional, um, but that was great. Thank so you. send us your email. Um, okay. If you can, um, well, you here, so we should definitely have it. Um, but if you can put it in the chat um, and send it privately to um, LA, you should see LA in the in the room. Do you, see, do you see mm -hmm. LA? I do. Okay, and then she will let us know that she received it, and just check your inbox for the vocal oven. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
Awesome. Everybody, we'll see you all on next week. Uh, Wendy Wyatt will be here. Um, the, the topic for next week is phrasing. Um, phrasing. And um, Mike, you close us out. Yeah, guys. Um, just glad you, you, you are part. Hopefully, um, you'll come back next week. And we'll just continue to go around higher each week. Um, and hopefully there will, there was something, you know, um, that may have been said or, or questions that, that were answered um, can definitely help take you guys to the, you know, to a whole nother level in whether it be ministering or just entertainment, whatever singing that you, um, or whatever vocalizing that you are actually, in, you know, engaged in, that it definitely help, you know, take you to the next level. Really appreciate you guys. Appreciate your support. Um, if you're looking for more stuff from, from the vocalshed.com. Take care, everybody. to me that the true ceiling of this building is not what we see here. Mm -hmm. This is considered the fabricated ceiling. Right. See what I'm saying? We would have te tear this off, then we would really see the true ceiling mm -hmm. of this building. Okay? Gotcha. A lot of times there's a, there's a fabricated range. <laughs> but it takes us actually working right. and pushing and working to get it to its truth. So there, there, is a, there is a true ceiling, and in most cases, most, most students or most singers true ceiling, you know,
it's just a cushion, right? So it's not a. It's not a <coughs> Are you looking for a professional business plan for your company? One that will amaze lenders and investors so they give you all the funding you need? And a plan that ensures you have the right Doctor. Hey. I think I just put everybody in the waiting room. Everybody else, I just put them out. Oh. How'd you put them out? I'm going to stop recording.